I don't know if I'm still there. Yeah, no, no, it's fair. Yeah, we'll first open to like uh, yeah, 3,500 a day, but, but our average is much lower than that. He said he was going to rebuy. Um, team manager, while we're. Yeah. I just can't do anything without the money. And then what you just ran from a commercial. You can be prepared that he's going to rebuy. Yeah. 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 No, it's just like a trip now. Yeah. When you walk in, it's a really big game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you would come and mess ten around and play. Ten, ten year lease and so on. Yeah. We're playing a lot. Um, seashell? 20. Seashell ice cream? Yeah. 28 yeah. Wow, what? It's 100. Yeah. Months of yellow. You got a really good location. Uh, in there. Just uh, Super Walmart yeah. just like opened up. And, and it's it's like years, we're in the fringe. Years, years, years. Years. Oh, this this 2,500 so plays. Chris, I added it's sitting right here for a moment. Chris. Chris. Is she running and getting your chips? Or? When she gets him chips. Wow. Yeah, purple's fine. Yeah. Reps behind 2,500. Yeah. That's yeah, a little that's red. Yeah. Yours is right next to your camera. You're going to play right in the middle. Not on the left, not on the right. No, he's, the, he's still in the, the tournament. He's multi-tabling. I thought about it. They have a nice, I like the way their logo is. I have too. some of their polos. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just right, because five. of yeah. these guys, well, they might service. give our time about. No, I went bust today. I came in uh, 56, oh, I think. Yeah. And it paid 45. Okay, congratulations. And Sean. And Sean. Yeah, so you got in the game. Too. I got 63rd. <laughs> I got the last one. <laughs> and Sean. And Tally was there. He saw it. Sean saved 5,000. I played great. You played great today. Oh, I'm starting to get cold. Starting to get chilly. Yeah, Who missed cold. their straddle, Alec? Yeah, that's true. This is it Always you, every time I look up. The first card that pays the tip? Yeah. I know, it cost me last time, too. What? One to the left. <laughs> so what'd you end up having? For you, the right. I don't want to say. Giving your position on the table. I think it was king. We get a big king. Or kings or queens. Damn, everybody's so deep. I wish I had, I had more money. I would have put it on the table. All you yeah, do is look up. around, yeah. and you would have seen how many chips everybody had. Oh, shit. Everybody is deep. That's the number one. Don't play with your whole bankroll. Six players. Some, if you're cheating, oh, you might as well. If you're what? If you're cheating. That's a three. He's got a third <laughs> point. <true>. <laughs> I guess that's true. I'll give a 50 to the dealer. Huh? Yeah. So 50. To the top oh, out. okay. 450. How does, oh, the first five First card. Hand. No, the first Oh, the wine. That's what I was thinking about that. I was like, wait a minute, I didn't even win the hand. Oh, the wine's way more than that. No, no, I know. That, I was just so confused. I wasn't thinking. I guess I'm running good. I never lost before. <laughs> Where's Matt? Matt's not playing? Okay. No, Matt's doing commentary. That's no in the way. booth. Where's yeah. the booth? Upstairs. Up there with that. But there are other plays right there. there. It's great. I guess I didn't get the seat. No, you're in. Oh, it's me. I mean, this seat. No, no that's me. Oh, okay. Don't go too far. 850. Yep. You want to switch seats? Where are you? Because that's the seat that really was kind of. I'm right here. I don't know. They told me to sit here. So I sat here. Travel, but can't change seats, buddy. It just opens up a hole. Yeah. Because you're getting hit with the deck. It's besides that. <laughs> Don't be complaining either way. Okay, I'll just keep this deck. They go all in. Switch seats. I mean, you're going to switch fine. seats. I ain't going to switch seats. That's fine. Yeah. I have a pair. Okay. 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 I have a pair. pair of sixes. I can beat that. Fives. Hey, it's hearts with it? Oh. <laughs> Five hearts with it. Good thing it didn't pair the three. I thought had a fire. I probably wasn't folding. <clears throat> Thank you. What's up, buddy? Was oh, the, yeah, did that end up getting to a 5K pot? Uh, Thank you. Eight sixteen. Didn't get to five K. Yeah. Okay, I'm saying. You've been playing there for a while. Huh? Yeah. You should be playing there. Twenty one is the end. I mean, you beat the yeah, end. Like last year, count five K total. Five K total, 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 yeah. Five K. Mostly PLO. PLO runs. Mostly. Um, it's got to be. And then the mixed games. 
They're great, obviously. They're like city. You can get a couple plays mixed too. No. Come on. Play. You're a smart guy. You can learn the games. Yeah, I should. I should get my pencil sharpened a little bit. So that, you have you have five K behind, right? No, do some now. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> That's disgusting. That's disgusting. <laughs> I know if I was moving over there, I was going to have 8K behind. You said you know what I folded? There you go. You have... Hello and uh, welcome back to the Poker Night in America one. live stream. 2550, no limit hold'em is what we're playing. We play with a straddle generally, which is $100 in addition. We are up in Verona, New York, up at Turning Stone. Beautiful uh, resort and casino. I haven't been here since my uh, my college days, and I got to tell you, if you're ever in upstate New York, this is a place to go. Very very cool spot. Five five seven flop. Um, and it looks like oh look at this, Tentali back in the game. Gotta love that. So we lose Matt Glantz, and uh, we get Tentali in the game. <laughs> it looks like we got Rep Porter in there as well. <laughs> Thomas just moved all in for 12.50. Thomas, uh, very short stacked. Travell Thomas has been on Poker Night numerous times. And uh, we continue on. If you want to follow us, you can. Over at Twitch, there's a chat room over there. Porter in for 10K. And Dentali in for 5K. We'll get that updated right away. So uh, just going around the table really quick. Richard Anthony in for 45K. That's in seat one. Seat two, Rep Porter. I believe it. We lost uh, Dominic Cristiano, the 888 qualifier. Stepped away about a $5,000 winner. Alec Torelli, seat three. Canuli still in there. Mike Dantelli. Travell Thomas. Joe McKeon, the November Niner. There's Sean Deeb. And then, of course, Bart Hansen in seat number nine, just to the right of the dealer. Playing 2550. If you want to uh, interact with the show, you can through the Twitch chat or you can tweet me at Tuck on Sports. Try to keep the show as interactive as possible. Joining me in the booth is Matt Glantz. Matt, how much how much were you in the game for? Was it like 60k? <laughs> I was in for 15k total. 15K. Three, three buy-ins of 5k, and uh, I finished up a massive $50 winner. You won $50, so a little bit so after less. After losing two buy-ins, you made a good comeback. Yeah, after losing two buy-ins, I got it. I got it in uh, good when I was losing, and got it in bad, and then won some back, and. Uh, it was nice. So those fifty dollar win today, a little bit less than Joe McKeon's win yesterday. I think he beat he won seventy five yesterday. Hey, right. better than losing. <laughs> I, it's better than being Blesnick. That's for sure. Blesnick did not have a good day. He texted me this morning and he he was supposed to play today, but he just he just didn't feel up to it after losing so much yesterday. He just didn't feel it. Yeah, he lost about thirty thousand yesterday. Our big loser today is Richard Anthony. So Matt Glantz, David Tuckman in the booth here. For you, I hope you're enjoying the Twitch uh, stream. We're back tomorrow, by the way, for the. Uh, the Empire State Final Table Championship. I think I got that name right. Nonetheless, though, uh, that, that they are nearing the final table, and I believe that live stream will start tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time at this same exact spot. So if the tournaments are your thing, you can watch that. I want to thank our sponsors, of course, 888 Poker, DraftKings, Giant Sunflowers, and Crush Live Poker. Yeah, Matt? There's about, uh, I think, a little under 20 players left in that tournament right now, and one of the Poker Night alum, so we have uh, David Baker still in the tournament, and he's got about an average stack with, I think, 19 left. So hopefully he'll make the final table, and uh, he'll be more than familiar with the set. See, nice variants, uh, variants alive and well in tournaments. Anybody can make final tables. Look at this. As Baker makes a deep run. That's the old David Baker, the original David Baker. Right. <laughs> So, yeah, it was fun yesterday. It was fun today. Uh, um, it was good, good to give up my seat now for Dentali took my place, and Rep took the place of the 88 sponsored player, Dominic uh, Cristiano. So it, it, there should be a little bit more action with Rep in there. He, he fires it off, and, uh, and Dentali is always a, a big mouth and a, a fun player of the game. Yeah, One the game will be louder yes. and probably more action without uh, Dominic in there and uh, with, uh, with Mike's voice in there. What's, uh, I, I know I, you and I talked off the air about this, but I, I think our audience might be interested in this. What's your thinking behind the short buys? Um, for, the, for the show's sake, I like the short buy. If I, if I was going to play in a cash game and it wasn't on TV, I'd probably buy in more. But for the sake of the show, it's better to have less blinds just for more action to try to get it in. Because like, if you saw earlier today, uh, you know, we got it in really late. 
light, especially me and Sean Deeb. Um, he he buys in for 20, and if I bought in for 20,000 also, we probably wouldn't be getting it in with Ace King or, and King Jack and King Queen, those type of hands. Um, today we got it in for 5,000 each with Ace King versus King Jack, and then next time he had Ace Jack, I had King Queen. And you really can't do that when you're playing 25, 50, 100 with 20,000, 20, 200 big blinds. So it, I like it because I get to get it more in, and then we have uh, more times we get it all in, then we get to run it out. It's better for TV. I, I think it's more fun to have run outs when you when you're deep sean has a different idea he likes to play really deep he thinks thinks people watching want to see you know big time strategy and thought process on each street um but it's, it's good to have both both scenarios going on all the time in the game i mean i enjoy it i mean I, we've seen a few hands today where there were some really good leveling wars and some great post-flop play and then you counter that with you know you and deep just gambling <laughs> Let's just get it in with Ace Queen versus Ace King, or not even, I mean, King Jack versus Ace King. Uh, what's the history behind uh, you guys slow rolling each other? Well, I kind of cautioned our, our viewers. I said, listen, it is always good and, and strongly encouraged to slow roll a good friend, but I wouldn't do it to a stranger. Well, that's very true. But if you play with Sean Deeb a lot, and we've played many, many hours of, of live cash game poker, whether it's mixed games, no limit, big bet games, uh, we've played a lot over the years. And, and probably over the last year, we played more than ever because he moved to Philly. He even bought a house in Philly, so he plays at Parks and, and Bergada with me. And um, so he does a lot of, he's big on the slow rolls. I'm not so huge on the slow rolls. Like, I think it's funny. And I'll do it to him because he loves it. I probably won't do it to many other people, but but for sure, it's expected coming from him. And and the more the people see it, the more they know it. So I think people are lightening up about it. Thomas was all in here for 1850 with the ace queen. Does not get looked up and picks that up. Thomas in the purple shirt with the glasses on his head. To his left, Joe McKeon, the November Niner. I think it's fantastic, by the way, that we got two November Niners at this uh, cash game table this weekend. And Canuli, by the way, who's wearing the black hoodie, and McKeon in the orange, have put in a lot of hours. Uh, first off, you played with them a lot. What were your impressions of their game? I mean, they're both very good players, so um, there's not ones you want to have at the table for... Uh, you know, to make money off of, but for entertain and from an entertainment value, the, uh, Joe is very funny, and I, I think the more uh, time on TV Tom can only gets, he's going to be a mo little more entertaining. But both really tough players are going to do a lot of three betting and put you in weird spots and put pressure on you. So you know, they're both great players, and it shows. You know, they made the final okay, table so the of the main event, and it wasn't just luck. I mean, they they deserve it. These guys. Yeah, I mentioned that earlier. I said, I mean, I think one thing that was definitely shown true this weekend is that. Um, while it takes a tremendous amount of luck to make a final table, I don't care how good a player you are, it was obvious that neither player, neither one of these players made it as a fluke. No, these Both guys are talented. two of the best uh, players in the East Coast in the tournament uh, circuit. For Joe is one of the best tournament players in the East Coast, and, and Tommy's one of the biggest winning No Limit Cash game players on the East Coast. Um, and there's also two other East Coast players, uh, Josh Beckley and Patrick Chen, that both made it. And they're all in the same circle of uh, guys that run around the, uh, the Brigada, Parks, Foxwood, those kind of places, Merlin Live, and, and play a lot of No Limit. So it's, it'll be interesting to see those four guys at the final table in November. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Rep went through three together. Matt Glantz, David Tuckman here for Poker Night in America. 2550 No Limit Hold'em with an optional $100 straddle. Pretty much every hand is straddled. Uh, same lineup except for two players. One of those players that's uh, no longer here, Matt Glantz, is alongside me. And, of course, Dominic Cristiano, the 888 qualifier, has stepped away. Don't know what Thomas's other card is. If it's an 8, it's really good, but he checks, so I'm going to guess it's not an 8. I'm quick like that. Dentali with trip sixes now. He's got the best hand there. <laughs> and then Travell couldn't wait to fold, he wouldn't wait to fold there. Could not wait. <laughs> I've watched him a lot now. He's been on Poker Night in America like three or four times. Uh, he's a character. Very tight player, though. Super tight, but with his image, it's great because the people don't know that. He's going to get paid off a lot. And a lot of these guys in the tournaments that play with him a lot, they know by now that he's tight. But I just played with him for the first time um, yesterday. And... Yeah, I, I thought for sure he was swinging it in, so I, I made a couple of calls right, and then I found out from other guys that really you shouldn't be calling him down late because this kid is really one of the tightest thirders around. Yeah, he's got a lot of he's got a lot of bling, um, and I think sometimes you know you judge a book by its cover, exactly. but if if a, if a player can play against that. They can uh, find a lot of success at the table. Yeah, I think I only had about three or four thousand 
in front of me at the time today, earlier when I had uh, Ace Queen, and I think I three bet it, and he just called with jacks for about 1150 or 1200, and we didn't get the rest in an ace flop, but he wasn't willing to get in 3000 pre flop with two jacks, so that tells you a little bit about his game, how tight he is. Yeah, you had ace queen there, right? Yeah. I do. Especially against you, I mean. Yeah, I was going to get it in late for sure. I mean, let, certainly I would have got him with 10s or 9s, so for him not to get in the jacks there is uh, is, is really probably over, overly too cautious. But that's the way he plays, and there's a lot of different ways to win at poker, and, and he's a big winner. So. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of players. It's kind of funny. People at home might think $3,000 is a lot of money, but it's always in relation to the blinds. Always. And in a 25-50-100 game, $3,000 is basically 30 big blinds. <laughs> Jack's certainly good enough to get it in with, with 30 big blinds. For sure. And I, I think even on that hand, I was either a small blind or the button. And he was either a small blind or big blind. So it's it's even even uh, an easier spot to get it in with those kind of hands. We are in the event center at Turning Stone in Verona, New York. If you've never been to upstate New York, beautiful this time of year. I avoid it. I would avoid it in the winter. I would also avoid any area about Rochester. Absolute hole. But the Saratoga region, the Syracuse region, gorgeous. <laughs> They're still talking about Seagull from yesterday. They miss Seagull. They want him back. Everybody loves playing with, with Mike Seagull. I didn't think Seagull was the... So worst no, player at the game yesterday, though. Won a big pot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say who I thought it was, but I didn't think he was the worst. Um, he, he actually has a good poker mind. He's just he's not a no limit holding player. He plays uh, his game is is stud high. He's one of the best in the world in stud high, and he'll let you know that. He also plays the mixed games pretty well. So no limits probably his weakest game, but uh, he, he has a good poker mind. So he did some he did a lot of things that you you wouldn't expect. Um, but like, as you saw it yesterday from the live stream. Horrible. He's a pretty tricky player. Yeah, no, he, I mean, he, he definitely, there was a couple of plays that he made that I thought were really good. I mean, he, he repped certain hands in certain spots. Um, you know, he got rep Porter to commit his whole stack. I mean, let's be honest, he lost a lot of money yesterday, but could have very easily won. I mean, he got aces all in versus queens. Yeah, if his aces held up versus reps queens, uh, he would he would have been a winner for the yeah. day. Um, but you could tell from watching the way he plays that his no limit hold'em experience uh, probably somewhat limited compared to the other games he plays. Yeah, for sure. So here's a spot where this is a dream spot for Rep to be in the straddle and pick up two nines, especially when action in front of him. But, you know, you never give the straddle any any kind of credit. It's like an extra big blind. So Unfortunately for him, though, it's got a matter of like, okay, do you want to gamble? Because Thomas raised. Thomas is pretty tight. Hansen three bets. He's been pretty tight throughout the day. Yeah, but Rep's not a folder. <laughs> no, Rep, we saw that yesterday. Rep does not like to fold. What's so, the play, though, with nines, though? I mean, it's a little bit it's a little bit ambitious to four-bet that, isn't it? It depends how deep he is. I think Rep started with 10,000, so he probably has somewhat less than 10,000 right now, which you definitely don't want to get 10,000 with nines, but straddle versus the small blind. I think uh, Bart probably has under 5,000, so I'm not sure what the effect of stacks are. No, Bart's got more than that. He's got all his orange. Okay. He's a pile of orange on top. Yeah, he's got a pile. But nonetheless, though, you know Thomas doesn't want to get it in light. For sure. Bart was trying to isolate him, obviously. And uh, kind of a, kind of an interesting. That's not a hand I think that Bart usually would three bet against Tom, against another player on the button. I would imagine he'd want to see a flop. Yeah, I mean, so this, he's going to try to set mine most of the time, but he probably just want to get a heads up with uh, Travell because yeah. if you get a heads up with Travell and he's playing that tight, if he misses the flop, you know, um, when Bart leads out after three betting. He's going to just pick up the pot so often. And sixes aren't going to flop that well very often, so it's, it's probably a good spot to three bet. And he's just got unlucky that Rep was in the straddle with a big, a big hand there. Dravenstone says, regarding upstate New York, I miss being able to buy a 2,700 square foot house from the early 1900s for $70,000, but I don't miss the winters. You could have come after me that hand. What happened? Yeah, having uh, gone to school in upstate New York, there's very little about upstate New York that uh, that I miss. But I will tell you, coming back here now that my my uh, my wife is from the area, we come back here every summer. It's beautiful. In the summer, it's gorgeous. <laughs> it's nice to come here in the summer. Yeah. So now Rep has two, two tens in the big blind, the hand after he had two nines in, in the straddle. It's not bad, especially when you're up against the nine ten off. He three bets again. He, this, uh, this time he three bets, last time he four bet. And both times he works. It's not random. 
No, we all redrew our seats afterwards. I mean, the seven of us just happened to get the same seat. So it looks like Richard so shut down a little bit since the beginning of the day. Seats, he was uh, he, he was gambling it up a lot in the beginning of the day, but he, he got caught bluffing a, two, a few too many times. I think he shut down a little bit. Yeah, you saw, you could see the kind of emotions oh, running through him. Uh, he had a couple of hands where he didn't get paid off, had a couple of hands where he got caught bluffing, lost a little bit of money, missed a big draw when he had ace-jack of clubs on a uh, two-club board, didn't hit the ace, didn't hit the club, ended up bluffing a lot of, bit of, a lot of money off to uh, Canuli. And that kind of set him on a, a path to uh, sort of like poker suicide in the sense that we blinked and he was down 25K. But he has definitely settled down since then. McKeon picks up uh, Queens. He's going to raise the 350. Dental, Dentali in the straddle. Dentali's a pretty tight player. Matt Glanch, David Tuckman in the booth here. If you have any questions, you can tweet us at Tuck on Sports. You can also send them through Twitch. There was a question earlier on uh, asking you about mixed games on the East Coast. When are you gonna get more of them? Oh, we got a ton of mixed games on the East Coast. So on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, you got big uh, mixed games from 75, 150 up to 200, 400, sometimes 300, 600 at parks. And on the weekends, you got uh, all types of games from 100, 200 up to 400, 800 at Forgata. Are the mixed games better now? Yeah. In that area, in the East Coast, and they are in, in L.A.? Or no? Oh, for sure. In L.A., there's only a, a pretty much game by appointment. Um, those guys like Jesse Martin and, and those guys have like a, a 200, 400, sometimes 3-6, like uh, triple draw and hold them only mix, uh, limit hold them. And Rep plays in those games. Rep is in the two seat in this game. And he, he, he flies down from Seattle to play in those games. But they don't have them nearly as often as we have on the East Coast. If you want to play mixed games for a living, um, you want to be on the East Coast right now. So basically, no limit. And PLO West Coast, no limit. mixed games East Coast. I mean, we have there's no limit games are probably better in Florida than the West Coast now. No, and really better than LA. If you, it depends what how big you want to play. The bigger the bigger private games are in Florida right now. Right, right. Um, the super super high games are in LA, but that's not for the average viewer. No. Um, and if you were to play 10, 10, 20. Oh, we got a big hand here for for uh, Hanson. I'm saying like take the train up to Albany. Bart, so Bart opens. Is that true? We don't even know yet. I mean, he will open, but we the graphics haven't updated yet. So it looked like Bart opened, then he got called by Richard. Yeah, the cutoff. I always let the graphics catch up to us. Okay. I figure it takes a second to get there, but it'll get there in a second. There you go. Hanson opens to 175. Anthony three bets to 400. <laughs> Porter decides not to four bet the king queen. Hanson looking for a reason to get involved with Anthony. I can tell you that. What's going on over there, Mr. Dieter? You look very serious. Waiting for the wine. Thirsty. I'm not even in the pot. How can I be serious? Yeah, he just calls. Yeah, I, I, I mean, obviously, I'm really good friends with Bart, and I can tell you that he really trusts his post-flop game. And I, I know that he would much rather play deep stacked. He'd much rather play deep stacked and. I just know that you guys are going to fold in my shelves. So You'd much rather really play deep stacked and, uh, and, and trust and play post-flop than play pre. Like Put a lot of money in pre and just kind of gamble. Like you know, he doesn't want to get it. He doesn't want to get ace-king in against, like, jacks. Right. You know? So I don't see the way that Rich is playing, even if he bet the turn again, I don't think Bart was going to fold. No, Bart's not going enough. anywhere. Yeah, he saw enough of that. I think it's going to go check-check here on the river. I never know. Anthony sometimes likes to fire at these things. He does like to fire, but I think he got caught too many times. And if he bets, I think uh, Bart's going to look him up anyway. I think it would be a big mistake for Bart to bet here. It looks like he's going to bet. He puts out a little blocker bet. He puts out a little blocker bet. I think, you know what, though? i got to tell you, I mean, if Anthony raises this, I think Bart's going to call. Do you think so? I do. I think he's <laughs> setting him up. I mean, I don't want to say it's a I mean, it might be a value bet. He might be trying to get called by ace-queen. I put it there's no Bart's it's not pretty, it's Bart's pretty, not trying to get sixes to fold. Right, right. It's try it's pretty hard to, to value bet for to it is, one hand exactly to call. I think he's doing it though. <laughs> or he's trying to induce a bluff. I think because because Anthony I was, love this. Wow, well, if he raises and Bart calls him. He does it. <laughs> <laughs> Bart just looked like he ate he's something. Like, Either that or somebody I think Sean Deep just farted. That must have been <laughs> it. <laughs> You're not betting three hundred to fold this. I, I thought I hope, he, I hope you're right for Bart's sake. <laughs> if he if he folds this, it's awful. And I love the guy. I love the guy like a brother. If he folds, it's terrible. 
Honestly, I, I would have much rather he bet 300, get the raise, and snap. Because that's what I thought. That's what I thought he did it for. Right? There it is. You're right. You called it. You know Bart's game. Great call. There's Great a call. play. Nice play by him. Very nice play by him. The only thing that might have would have made it slightly better he was if he faster. snapped. Yeah. yeah, if he just snapped it. <laughs> it seemed like he wasn't expecting to get raised though, with his face, his facial reaction, and he didn't call right away. So I mean, he's got to realize about if, if he's. I'll give him credit. He's got to realize if he's putting a blocker bet in there, it's either going to do one of two things. It's, you, you maybe you get a hero call from Ace Queen. Maybe you get a fold, but you might be inducing a bluff, right? Yeah. Nice play by him. I like it. No, I know. Crush slide, poker. Crush slide, poker. Dentali, not a good idea, buddy. So if you see Dentali in the bottom of the screen, he's trying to get the uh, dealer's chair to, to get in his spot, like a nice swivel chair where all the other guys have a straight, ugly uh, flat chair. He wants stuck. to be the king. It's he's usually Dentali's stuck. mentality to be a uh, one-up everyone at the table. So that's he's, he's, he's one right of those now. guys who probably likes to like yeah raise his chair a little higher so exactly. he's taller. Exactly. Show the muscles. Yeah. <laughs> So you can see Rep there repping his uh, Poker Academy, pretty new site where he's uh, doing some poker training. I think started probably three or four months ago. It's oh, that's well. cool. A lot of good training sites out there. For sure. And a lot of guys at this table doing good training sites. I think there's three of them. Alec, Bart, and uh, and Rep. Yeah. What is, uh, what's Alex called? I don't even know. Uh, FourStepPoker.com, I think. He has, his shirt says it. Whatever. Okay. Something Alex, about Alex steps. great at poker. I, I don't like the name. It's four step poker. <laughs> Not only is he great at poker, but he's great at explaining things. <laughs> yeah. He's very fluent. I thought he was excellent in, in, uh, with analysis and insight yesterday. Rep, uh, rep is the pre flop three better. Isolating Anthony. And that has been the, the MO since the start. So yeah. And this is not a slight on Anthony. It's just, you know, right out of the get-go, nothing really went his way. Yeah. And like poker players are like sharks yeah. to blood. They sense that, and they, they, they feast on it. It's not the kind of hand you want to raise the call three-bet out of position with is ace-nine off, and that's what he did there. And it's, it, it's very, very hard to win a nice spot with that hand when you're getting three-bet. Yeah, it's like it's the same card. I think a lot of them I look at have marks in them. So it looks like Thomas is up a lot. He bought in for 20. Thomas. Jeez, Thomas Cannoli. So you in for more? In oh, for Cannoli, more yeah. Cannoli is, uh, yeah, he bought him for 20. He's up 15. Uh, McKeon, by the way, only bought him for 10. He's up 13. <laughs> okay. D bought him for 20. He's up 7. Torelli bought in for 13. He's up 3. So everyone's winning? No. That's a nice game. No, Hansen's winning. down 7. <laughs> Hansen's down like 7,000 now, 6,600. Uh, Thomas is down. Anthony's the big loser. Oh, by far. Yeah. Anthony's down 32,000. Oh, is he? Yeah. That much? I didn't realize it was that much. Canuli, by the way, how's this for, for a two-day score between last night and today? Guys up 30K. Really? Did he get most of Jared's chips last night? Yeah, you got a ton of Jared's chips at yeah. the end. Jared made a move. Um, to be honest with you, I didn't think Lesnick played terrible. I just think he played, he had three huge pots. And I thought he made mistakes in all three of those hands. Um, and the final one was against Canuli where he turn, he flopped the flush draw. He turned a pair to go with, along with the flush draw. And he made a move. And Canuli had second set. Okay. Um, all the chips went in with one with the river card to come. Well, Jared really is very, very tough to play against because he's he's very unconventional with all his bet sizing and, and his lines. He doesn't play like any other no-limit player, so it's very hard to put him on a hand. But at the, at the same time, he's not always playing the optimal lines, so it can hurt him in spots. Yeah. Um, but at the beginning of the game, for the first three or four hours, he was dominating yesterday. That was actually the kind of case, I don't know if you know, so uh, main event this year, I had Blesnick on my right. And I will tell you that for the first, first few hours... He gave a lot of the players at the table headaches simply because it was, you know, he'd raise 5x pre, sometimes you'd bet 2x pot. You know, he mixed up his play and made it very, very tough to play against. But he did admit, you know, this is a, Blesnick's a PLO player. Yeah. It's not a hold'em player. Doesn't play a lot of hold'em at all. I actually did know that he played at your final, at your table at the main event. You know how I knew that? How'd you know? Listen to your podcast interview of him. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> Another great podcast by you, which were very informative, and especially with you asking the tough questions about multi-counting, so it was very interesting. I know a lot of my friends wanted to listen when, when, when you, I think, tweeted out or so, somebody tweeted out that you were doing that yeah. and asking him those questions. So that was very intriguing. Well, we got, we, I mean, we got along and everything, and you know, 
Um, so, you know, we talked for like 40 minutes about like the, the World Series and strategy and all these things. But, and then you, you know, I, I, I don't th stuff. Yeah, I don't think I, I, I can't have him on the podcast and not ask him that question. I respect that for sure. You know, and he answered it very well. He's if answered, anybody doesn't know, he, could. he said, I have done it before. Yep. He answered. He told us why he did it. He did. He said he did it because he, he wanted to get action against somebody. Too difficult for the. He also said that you shouldn't do it. I think he knows it was wrong with the time. He probably just saw the dollar signs in his eyes, okay. and it was just yeah, too too much of a temptation. I think he should be. But uh, overall, I think Jared's a, a nice kid, and he's always fun to play with. Like fifteen hundred bucks. Um, oh, and like uh, you know, yeah. playing online, there's a lot of gray areas and in, in, in morals that that people have to deal with all the time. If I was going to play online, which I haven't since Black Friday, but if I was going to play online now in big stakes, I would just have to assume everyone's multi-accounting or cheating or. or or doing things like that just because you're um, when you're playing are. high stakes there's just too much money involved to it to, to be that naive to think there isn't those things going on no, it, it's, it's no different from live poker or any, anywhere else you and just always you have to be uh, aware like of what can be happening at the time yeah it's a good point i mean i think a lot of people i tell people all the time i go if you are playing poker have a great time but protect yourself. Exactly. Because you never you know. Sad, There's, there are people out there that are angle shooters, and you got to be aware of it. Um, you know, in terms of Blesnick, I'm not going to make a judgment call on it. Uh, I'll leave that for our viewers and for people who listen to the podcast. And by the way, that's uh, that podcast is free. You can listen to it at CrushLivePoker.com. It's called Under the Gun. I do a weekly podcast. Um, Thank you, Jill. He doesn't say it, that but I said. Thank you, Jill. As you mentioned, he was a young guy. And. She didn't serve it yet. My guess is the vast majority of us did a lot of stupid things when we were 20 years old. Right, and people think that poker's special. It's really not special in this case. In every kind of business, in all walks of life, there's people cheating and people doing immoral things, so it's really no different. It's just that in poker, you hear about it more because people bring it up and want to protect themselves more. In business, it's not a, it's not a public uh, consumption kind of thing going on all the time where poker is and everybody knows each other in the community. But, it's, I mean, look, look, Tom Brady deflated the balls. It's, just, it's no different than, you know, it might not be any different than multi-accounting as far as a, a infringement on, on a sport. I mean, I think I think Tom Brady is worse than all of them. How much is it? I mean, that, that might be because I'm a Jets fan, but yeah, right. I might be slightly jaded. But if you think about it, it's all sports, all businesses. There's people cheating all the time, so it just... Poker gets a, a bad name sometimes just because it's gambling, but if you think about it, it's no different than any, any other walk away. I mean, in all fairness, I mean, I hate to admit this, but I, I played hockey growing up. I played hockey in college. And if somebody had told me that I could take some magic pill and play in the NHL for 10 years, of course, when I was 21 or 22 years old, somebody said, hey, take this magic pill. It's, it's not legal, but hey, you could do it. By the way, uh, Thomas is all in. Deeb uh, is behind. Thomas has got a pair of kings here. Deeb needs an ace and only an ace. And now the ace. Now Deeb can slow roll. I cannot win. <laughs> here comes the slow roll. <laughs> hey, you win. Bro, I know you win the hand, bro. <laughs> I know you, you, you win, bro. Yeah. <laughs> he just can't help himself, so I'm the slow roll. <laughs> okay, um, but yeah, I mean, if you told me that and you said, hey, it's not exactly legal, but you could go play in the NHL for 10 years and play the game of your dreams and make money doing it. I'd be hard pressed to say no. I think every, every young kid in your spot would do that. <laughs> of course, he's gonna look good. I knew he had an ace. I knew he was gonna look like So how many slow rolls is that uh, in the two days we've been here on Turning Stone for Sean? Yeah, they're not they're not good slow rolls. No, they haven't been that great yet. I had a slow roll with a guy. It was actually kind of funny. So I'm in the hand with the guy. The guy crumples up his cards, slams the table. Yeah, I knew there was because I got because he thought I gave him a bad beat. You started putting the cards in the muck and then reached back and turned them over. Oh, that's pretty good. I got to use that one on Sean one time in the future. Yeah. I didn't ever thought about that one. You got to really sell the anger, though. That is good. Guy just always just gets there. But this, I mean, I'll tell you, this SOB though, he does it when the pots hurt. He doesn't do it when it's like a fun little pot. He does it when he knows it's going to be a painful one. You forgot. I forgot. <laughs> See, that's the thing is, I'm known for so as I still I'm surprised. Totally you really thought he has seven yeah, yeah, There's a lot of guys uh, <laughs> commentating on you, Sean Deep's slow rolls. Yeah. Like I said, this is a friendly game, guys. Uh, and it's one of those things where, hey, 
You're playing with friends. That's what it's. That's what it's all about. Uh, have a good time. I encourage the slow rolls with friends, but don't do it with a stranger. Six. Six. Well, exact count. Give them exact count. Count it down. So we got a this kind of a, a little less than six. Uh, nine, big pot could have developed there I like with Al Alec five. raising under the gun with Ace Knight six. suited, and then uh, Travell, who just got, who just got felted, three bet him. So you never you never know if Alex is going to think that Travell's getting out of, out of line, a little hey, tilted there. We've been watching Torelli for a while, and obviously we listened to him yesterday, and he's he's an extremely bright guy. We know that he crushes no limit hold'em games all over the world. What was it like playing with him? With, I, I mean, Alex, so first of all, Alex has, I, is a great player, fundamentally very, very, very strong, I, knows what he's you, doing. He's, he's, he's probably has the most live no-limit experience of anyone at the table, <laughs> maybe other than Thomas uh, Cannoli. And the thing about it, Al Alec is he was doing the live stream all day yesterday, so he got to see everyone's whole cards. He's a huge advantage today going in there and knowing how knowing everyone's tendencies, especially if someone like, if, if Jared was in the game today, um, Lesnick, basically because he was so making so many odd sizing bets and doing so many uh, weird lines, that would be a huge <laughs> advantage for Alec to come in the well, game we'll after seeing watching him for, for a day. First two but everyone who played yesterday, Alex got yeah. a big advantage over right now. You got five. Was it I believe Travell Thomas rebought for 6,000. Oh, really? So Alex got Jackson in the straddle. This could be big. Yeah, we're just double checking exactly what the buy-in was, but it looks like $6,000 for Thomas. Take him home. We have a cooler with us. So a raise from Canuli with the Queen-9. I believe Deeb is called with threes. Action on Torelli. Alec just called out of the straddle with Jax. He just calls. So we'll see this one three ways. There's a set of threes. <laughs> well, there's a pretty good oh, flop for, wow. for Alec. Oh, wow. Oh, set over set. This is not going to go well for Sean, no matter what happens. Wait, wait, Canuli's open-ended. Oh, wow. This is just a huge flop. This is enormous. How great is it that Alex just called it on the straddle to find this flop? Oh, he's totally under his hand. <laughs> I mean, if you're deep, you think you got the nuts, the way the hand played out. For sure. There's, well, I any, mean, I mean, anytime you flop a set, you're going to pretty right, much right. you flop the nuts. I mean, Canuli did, was the, was the pre-flop raiser. I mean, he could theoretically have jacks or tens in his range. Yeah, it's more likely that Alex would have jack ten from deep's point of view than, yeah. than having jacks or tens. So, and really, deep's more worried about Canoli having jack uh, pocket jacks or pocket tens in this spot. So this is going to be really interesting. What would be the best if, if one of these guys slow rolls deep for the huge spot here? I think uh, the Twitch streamers, or the guys that watching on the Twitch would really like that to see that at the well, end of What's the whole spot. point? I mean, if you're going <laughs> to slow roll somebody, it's got to be when it's painful. <laughs> but Deeb is my hero. He might, he might river quads here, or turn quads, Crazy. knowing how he runs. <laughs> So a bet of 300, then a raise to eight? No, okay, here we got it. Money's starting to go in now. <laughs> so he makes a 3300, and inside Alex's head, he's jumping up for joy right now. He has no idea what, what a great spot he is in, other than uh, he's going to get Cannoli out of the hand here, I think. So if he just calls, I still don't think Cannoli's going to call the 3300. It's tough because he doesn't close the action. Yeah. Well, I mean, actually, if he just no, calls, if he, if he, he does. If he calls, he right? does call the action. If he does just call, he causes the action. Now, earlier on, we saw Torelli slow play the nuts when he had ace, nine of spades. That cost him a lot of money because mm -hmm. Hanson had flopped top set. Now, this is a uh, with a jack-10-3 board and as much action as we've seen so far, you wonder what Torelli's going to do, although he's got the board crushed. I mean, there aren't really two-pair combinations your opponents would have in a raised pot. You know, they're not going to have 10-3 very often, so you're thinking... Deep's either got a draw here, or he's got a set of tens or a for set sure. of threes. That's true. The, for for okay. sure, Torelli could go either way here. He could call, or he could re-raise here. But I think he's under repped his hand so much when he just checked out. I mean, just called it out of the straddle. That either way that he goes right here, it doesn't matter for Deep. Deep's certainly getting in. I don't think Canoli's going to call even just the 3300. Just too big of a price, and I'm not sure they're deep enough. <laughs> And this is, of course, you know, there are a lot of times people ask me, you know, with jacks, do you like the three bet? Do you like the call? You know, it, it really depends on the situation, but there are a lot of times where I'll mix it up. And one of the reasons being is when you hit a jack, it's so underrepped. Yeah. And against certain, against certain players, when you three bet with jacks, you hate getting four bet. I mean, this is the textbook flop you want when you're going oh. to call out of the, the straddle with these two hands. Canoli can't call here, but he can shove. 
because he can be the only one that rep, reps jacks or tens. He's going to call oh, this. Okay, I thought, okay. He does close I, the action. He closes the action I because Torelli just called. There. Yeah, Torelli didn't re-raise. He just called there. Turns a 10. <laughs> so, Canuli is now drawing dead. So Canuli's done, done with the hand. Sean's going to bet. The only thing I'll say, now that the 10 pairs, I know you've got a full house. You've got to start putting your opponent on a range of hands. You go, okay, in terms of made hands, what can threes beat? The, the only th it's going to be a little tough for Sean because he thinks that if Alec had Jack-10, that he's going to re-raise there on the flop. He's not going to let another car get come off. So it's unlikely that Alec has Jack-10, how, how it played out. But Steve just checked it back. He went check, check, check on the river, on the turn. It checks through on the turn. Too bad the straight card didn't come for Cannoli there. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> if, if an eight comes off there? So it's just going to go bet, fold, call here. Alec didn't bet. Wait, is the flop's changing? Uh, yeah, it's changing, but it's not. <laughs> okay. We know what it is. I mean, you understand what I'm saying. It's just one of those things where, you know, when your opponent starts putting a ton of money in on the river, what can threes beat in terms of value hands? Well, they both checked to him. So I, I don't know why Alec would check here after... Ch Deep check Did they behind? both check the deep? No, no. I think the action's still on Torelli. The dealer's looking at him. Okay. The board is, by the way, and I don't know what's going on with their graphics. Jack 10 3, 10 7. <laughs> I sort of think Alec bet 8,000. And Deep's going to have to make a crying call. He hates it now. He literally hates it. Let's hear him. So usually when you flop top set and then a 10 comes on the turn to pair the board, you think that's a good card? But in this one case, because Alex's most likely hand was jack 10, free flop, just calling out of the straddle when he when he went put so much money in on the flop, it really hurt him. Yeah, no, oh, for sure. When you start thinking of the two pair combinations, you start thinking of the hands, you know, when you've got a hand like pocket threes, you go, okay, what kind of hands could my opponent have that we can get a lot of chips in that I still beat? And since there are no really other two pair combinations, you don't beat any other sets. And Torelli's not going crazy with like ace jack. Right. Unfortunately though, if Torelli three bet the flop, they would have they would have got stacks in. Yes. 20,000 would have went in because Deeb's going to yeah, give him ja Jack-10 is so much more likely just calling out of the, out of the straddle than Jacks or 10s. Yeah. So he's never going to think he's beat there. Oh, and by the way, and if, and if Torelli raises flop, we're getting it all in too. That's, so if he three-bet the flop. They get oh, yeah. They get oh, I see. Yeah, oh, for if sure. If three-bet the flop, it was going all in there. Definitely. Yeah. Tentali's going to raise with two black queens. I mean, it, it's so easy from the booth. I mean, we can see the cards and we know, hey, if you knew your opponent had exactly this, then yes, you should. Well, it, not even if you knew what he had, but just the turn card really hurt him. Yes. If the turn card came a black deuce, Stacks would have went in and also. So it was just kind of unlucky for him that the board paired 10. I think it was a fine play by Alec. He could, he could easily three bet or just call as he did on the flop. By the way, how... Uh, you like Deeb's check back on the turn? How many players? How many players go broke right there on the turn? The thing is, I, th I actually don't like his check back on the turn. Really? I think if he bets five or six thousand, and then he gets raised, he can easily fold his hand. He's never getting raised by worse. He's never getting check raised by worse on the turn. He could check back the river if he wants, depending on the river. But um, when he, when he check backs the turn, he's not. It's not really a spot where Alex's going to bluff the river, but now he has to pay off the river because he checked back the turn. So, so now he pays off more, where I think he could have bet 5,500 on the turn and forwards to the check raise. As, as sick as that seems. I mean, if Torelli check raised. Torelli's pretty right. sneaky. I mean, who knows? He might, honestly, Torelli, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't have shocked me. Let's say the, let's say the turn goes check, check, bet. And then, and then Alex calls. I wouldn't shock me if Torelli checked the river as well. Yeah, if he checked the river, but I think Sean's going to check yeah. behind on the river if he yeah. calls the turn. If he calls that bet on the turn, what, else, he calls five, he, what else does he have besides Jack-10 yeah. on that board when they come possibly. to Jack-10? Yeah, possibly. 10. Sure. Starting to feel like I get the little 
Dentali all in. This is another action flop here. Joe's not folding. Joe wants to beat Dentali so bad. Oh, doesn't everybody? <laughs> I mean, it's probably why Dentali does well. They have a lot everybody of history. Everybody wants to beat him. Yeah, well, Dentali and McKeon for, for years have had history on, on Twitter so bad. So Dentali much, might slow roll him here. No, no slow Dentali roll. all in before 1,000. And there's the queen. Dentali uh, didn't need it, but got it anyway. Oh, this... This makes Dentali so happy to beat Joe McCain. Joe is, just there, is there, um, is it, is there, are they friends? They're friendly fr banter, or they is it more Venom? They are friends. They're, it's a love-hate relationship where it's going on and off every month. But uh, just about a week or two ago, Joe had enough, and he blocked uh, Mike Dentali on Twitter. <laughs> Dentali got very upset, and uh, I think he unblocked him yesterday after the cash game. So uh, they're back to friends, but, you know, next week they'll hit each other. But if you follow both of them on Twitter, you'll see uh, who, a lot of banter back and who forth. Who doesn't have an issue with Dentali? <laughs> I mean, yeah, he pretty much has an issue with everyone. You're correct about that. I mean, he likes to argue with the floor. He likes to argue with the other players. But I love him. He's funny. He's no, he's great for the, TV. Hilarious in the game. He's great for the game. And from my point of view as a commentator, I love him in the game because it's so much fun. But I kind of just. I outplayed him with a better hand. Want to show out? I outplayed him with a better hand. Actually, the best line yesterday from Blesnick was uh, when uh, when Blesnick bluffed uh, Dentali. Dentali was like, before you could see it, Dentali was like, you're not good enough to bluff. You're not good enough to bluff. And then finally it was revealed that it was a bluff. And Dentali was like, oh, do you have a read on me? And, and Blesnick goes, no, I'd never read. I just don't think you're very good. <laughs> he's so funny. And it was Blesnick funny. is so funny with the It banter. was great, the two of them, just going at you each know, other. You does, know, he does the same things when he's not on TV, just in a regular cash game. What we play mixed games. He's doing that all the time. He really gets Blesnick? the player. Yeah. yeah. Blesnick gets the player under the player's skin. It's great. He's great for the game because he, he kneels everyone and gets everyone so tilted. I think that's part of his, his shtick. Oh, yeah. And some people misconstrue it. They think, okay, this guy's a jerk. He's the part of his thing is, and I noticed this on day one of the main event, part of his thing is to get on the people's skin. Because he realizes, okay, if I can get seats three, five, and seven to hate me, he goes, maybe they'll get their ego involved, and they'll try to get me. Yeah, for sure. And I, that's part of his thing. It's definitely part of his game. He, know, he knows what people think of him. He knows when he agitates people. Uh, he never stops. So, um, you know, he's always like one one word or one sentence away from getting punched in the face by like an old guy at the table or something. But he never stops. He doesn't put on the brakes. I'm speeding it up. Get a raise here from McKeon. Anthony called or three bet? Yep, he three bet. Stayed 100. Mac Lance, David Tucker here, Poker Night in America, live from Turning Stone in Verona, New York. 2550 of the blinds with a hundred dollar straddle. Thomas was the straddler. He has rebought for what I thought was six thousand. That's what it looks like to me, at least. That's what we'll uh, we'll we'll. we'll, we'll yeah, we'll it looks, about, looks about six thousand, right? That's what yeah. I thought. Oh, the orange chips you see, those are one thousand. The purple chips are five. Black chips are a hundred, and those greenish ones are twenty-five each. Jack six deuce, two clubs out there. Anthony with the C bet. Anthony's going to win it. Anthony has settled down, by the way. It seems like he's made a small comeback from his uh, when he's since he's been buried peak. Yeah, a little bit. He might win a few thousand back. I, don't, I didn't see him lose any big pots recently. Oh, he lost that one pot where he uh, kind of took the bait from Hansen. He tried to bluff right. the Ace King. That's 1,200 on the river. It wasn't a huge yeah, pot. Yeah, no, big deal. Still down 32,000, but to your point, he is making a little bit of a comeback. That's for real, bro. You do business? Yeah, sorry. 10 seconds. I call. Rep has a theory about why she did it. Poker Night in America's next stop, Florida. Then after that, we go to Canterbury, Minnesota. You can uh, you can watch all the streams here on Twitch at Poker Night TV. You can also follow at Poker Night TV on Twitter for all the updates. Let you know exactly where we're at, when we're out there. But uh, some of the biggest names in poker we have every single month on these shows. It's fantastic. I mean, you think of like you know Jennifer Tilly and Phil Locke, Antonio, Phil Helmuth, Deeb. A lot of all stars of poker. Yeah, and a lot of old school guys. You even had Mike Madison on the first, the very first poker in America. Entertaining people. 
Come on, so yeah. good answer. Two thousand. And then after the game, she goes, I told you I'd show if I fall. You're right. Yes, you're right. You're correct. You're right. all she did was honor your request. You're right. You're right. Jack eye flop, no suits. Looks like 10s are still in the lead. Sorry, two clubs out there. Handsome, we can only see one of his cards. We know he's the five of clubs. Good chance he's suited there, unless he's got a, a pair. Chance. Especially considering no one else has a club except Deeb, so yeah. it's more likely he has a club in his hand. I'm not going to help him, though. No, 10's still in the lead. Nobody's got a 9. Yo, I did not say she embarrassed If it wasn't a girl, would it be an embarrassment? So Joe just has total air, so he's going to fire into the field. And he's not going to get called by anyone. He's going to win that pot. There's another pot that Joe's picked up where... I don't know. I don't know if Deep's going to fold. Did Deep fold that yeah, quickly? Deep folded. He did, wow. It's just, it's just the worst card on the, on the turn for him. Yeah. A jack beats him, and now a 9 beats him. Um, so, really, he can only beat a bluff at this point. So, it's just another example of how good Joe is at poker at No Limit. Fulton just picks up these pots where no one else is uh, is fighting for him. For a moment, just talk about the confidence that helps you at poker. You know, obviously, it, it's weird because the cards have no memory. Rationally speaking, it shouldn't make a difference. Right. But we see, I mean, Canuli and, and Joe McKeon are kind of like evidence to that. Both guys supremely confident right now, coming off just the summer of their lives when it comes to poker. And you see it at the table. I mean, the confidence is absolutely brimming, and it's paying off. Well, I know Joe pretty well. So he lives 15 minutes from me out right outside Philly, and he plays a lot of parks, and I've known him for a few years now. And you could see the confidence in just his personality and the way he, around, he, the way he walks around. Um, even last year when he, when he first came in second in the Monster Stack, just from that, that was like his first uh, big moment in tournament poker, and then this year, making the final table as a chip leader, like his, his confidence is beaming. He just has no fear at the table and very confident. It's very tough to play against someone when they're feeling like that. Not when the seven hearts come. Is there something you do or something you can do when to kind of like in a weird way like fake it until you make it, you know what I mean? Like, like, like maybe you're not running as well as you'd like to, but somehow you can not just get word. your confidence to the point where it should be yeah, or where it needs to be? To I mean, you just have to get to the point in poker. To be successful at poker, you have to realize that you're going to win sometimes, you're going to lose sometimes, and there's a lot of things that are out of your control in the game of poker. But if you're playing your best and making good decisions, you really can't worry about the rest, the variance. You have to be able to, to overcome the variance mentally. And uh, you just, just have to get it out of your head that whether you're lucky or unlucky is really irrelevant. So over the long run, if you play poker every day for the, the next 20 years or five days a week as a professional, you're, you're going to, on average, you're going to run around the same as everyone else when you how often you flop a set, how often you make a flush, those kind of things. Now, some people are going to just win the big pots and big tournaments and get luckier than you, uh, you know, over that span. But overall, if you really can't control your luck, so you want to, you really want to focus on what you can control, and that's that's just making the right decisions. Hanson in the straddle, rep Porter picks up ace king under the gun plus one. He's going to raise to three hundred. How many hours a week do you play these days? Uh, these days, probably about twenty hours a week, which is a lot less than I have in the past. Yeah, you don't go out to dinner with them ever again. Do you enjoy it more now that you're only playing twenty hours a week? Yeah, it's definitely more of a grind I'm playing full time, but now I'm playing like half full time, so it is more more fun and it's 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 just more entertaining to play mixed Even games and it is just big bet yeah, no, no I, limiter I, I, or pot limit no mall just there's always yeah, a little so flavor and, and different people so coming in the game like in and out of the game it's not the same players and yeah. it's just nicer that way porter with top pair top kicker he's also got the key and clubs to boot and this hand is going to be over right now i was actually talking to torelli about it yesterday in terms of like life balance and, and torelli's great at that by the way He's, he is we, we we spend a lot of time talking about that and i think it makes a lot of sense and i put on good Wholeheartedly. Wow, Thomas called? No, I don't. It's not something we normally see from Thomas. I don't think he called. He had either raised or fold. There he goes. He raised. So you see he got stuck. He lost his first buy, and now he's getting a little uh, a little more liberal. And <laughs> he picked the wrong time, and rep three bet him on the flop, and that was the end of Thomas. That's it. He did, and he gets up. No, he, there he is. Right. He look, it's like <laughs> the first bluff I make all day. Right. Literally the first bluff he makes all day, and he just picks the worst time. Um, I would have actually prefer. I mean, if he had some equity, obviously I would have rather that. I, I think I'd probably rather just float there and see if he can take it away in the turn. You know, maybe some sort of card that comes up that's connecting. 
Yeah. And like, that would definitely be uh, no one can complain more creative, but I think. Um, you know, if Rep doesn't have an ace there, even a big ace, he might he might lay it down just uh, like a like an ace nine, ace eight. That's not too pair. You want to lay it down there, but, but uh, obviously he had just too big of a hand, so it's just bad timing. Who's this dude? He didn't look. I guarantee Rep didn't look. I, I know Rep. He wouldn't say that. Like, oh, that's Richard. They moved. Oh no. No, but we I, I, I swear to God, the table turned. The table around. turned around. Yeah. I, I like totally lost that's my mind there. That's why I thought Travol got got up when I said that. Yeah, because you told me he got up, and yeah. I was like, where did he? Oh, wait a second. I got so confused. I was like, some dude is touching the same his chips. <laughs> totally blew my mind there. Um, anyway, so what we were saying, I was saying, I have noticed in my own game, and I said this yesterday, I've noticed in my own game, I'm playing about 20, 25 hours a week now, but I've noticed that I make as much money from poker in 20 hours a week, 22 hours a week, that I do when I play 38 hours a week. Okay. Because... I'm just not as sharp. I'm not enjoying it as much. You must be more focused. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just sure. more focused. So it's like I get 20 really, really quality hours, way better than 38 kind of sort of focused, maybe not quality, yeah. whatever hour. You know what I mean? And it's been paying off. That's great. You gotta you gotta do what works for you. Everybody has a different uh, mentality and a different strengths. And some people, the, the more hours they play, the better they'll do. And, yeah. And someone like you or me at, at our age, maybe it's it's more beneficial to only play 20, 25 hours a week. A young kid who can uh, you know play 60 hours a week and grind it out is probably it's probably gonna be beneficial for them to put in more hours. I mean, the weird thing is, it's not even a matter of like it's not a matter of being tired. It's just enjoyment. Like I, I like. If you enjoy it more. You can be better yes. focused. That's what I mean. I yeah. just I, I like going to the gym and I like hanging right. out with my family and I want to do other things and and I just noticed that if I play more than three or four days a week, I'm just like eh. And you're playing mostly at the Commerce or the bike. Yeah. yeah LA's casinos basically. Yeah. I'm there some of the time. I mean, obviously, when I travel, I'll play somewhere else. But generally speaking, LA Cassini's. Uh, Torelli, by the way, has bought in for 13,000, so he's up nearly 20. Oh, wow. Canuli bought in for 20, he's up 11. McKeon, he bought in for 10, so he's up 8. Hansen is down about 7. We have Thomas is down about 5. Deeb. This one's probably down 5 after he paid off the 8,000 on the river with the set of yeah. That seems right. Anthony, by the way, our big loser. He was in the game for forty-five thousand. You just had a hand. And uh, so he's down about thirty thousand right now. By the way, we uh, pretty much got it right. Travell Thomas actually rebought for five thousand seven hundred and fifty. Okay. Kind of a weird. It's kind of, that's usually bad news when someone buys in for an odd amount. It means like the last money in their pocket. That's what I mean, right? It's like the guy. Who, you know, you're playing a smaller game, and the guy reaches a, reaches his pocket and does a short buy for like for three hundred and twenty bucks. I don't mean I don't mean Travell's last money in in life money, but I mean the last money he has in his pocket for the trip. Right. You almost want to be like, dude, keep the fifty bucks in your pocket. Exactly. It's okay. Exactly. That's not going to do anything. You save the money for the bus ride home or something. <laughs> Is there anything worse? Anything worse than going to valet and not being able to tip the guy? <laughs> yeah, but you don't have to worry about Travell. He's fine. He's financially sound. I, I, I figure if anybody's playing in this game, they are. I'm just uh, kidding around with them. Yeah. Anthony, by the way, big flop for him. Pair and a flush draw. This is not a big flop for Rep, but Rep is not a folder, so it's going to be tough for Anthony. He's going to have to barrel three streets here. I think he raised the flop. Porter picks up a gut shot. I can tell you one thing, Rep will not be folding this street, so... Be folding? He's betting. <laughs> <laughs> well, Anthony didn't give him a chance to fold because he didn't bet. Right. He checked to him. But he should have bet that street. Oh, yeah, he's got to... Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, to me, you can you can unload the barrel a little there. Now he's going to have to lose the pot. Yeah. Seven's good. Most of the time, you're worried about I actually prefer having, when I've got a, a pair and a flush draw, if I have to choose which pair it is, I'd rather it be bottom pair or middle pair, simply because it's le I'm less likely to be sharing that pair with yep. my opponent who has a better kicker than me. Very true. So you had more outs that yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. If your opponent, if you've got queen jack suited and you flop top pair, your opponent has you out kick with ace queen, well, the queen's not going to help you. But in this case, deuce five, obviously, you can catch a deuce, you can catch a five, catch a club. Yeah. Just a couple extra outs. They add up. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite game at this point? My favorite game? I mean, I, I don't really have a favorite game. I don't really dislike any games. It's all poker to me. 
So, it's just my favorite game is really whatever the opponents I'm playing with the table play worse. So when I'm playing mixed games, like, sometimes it's going to be a, a draw game like Badoogie or Triple Draw. Sometimes it's going to be a limit hold'em even or limit or Omaha low. Um, just whatever I think I have the biggest edge in at the time, but it's always different, and uh, it's just all poker to me. It's all just making decisions. It's not really about the game that we're playing. Poker staples in the Twitch uh, stream. What's up, Staples? How you doing, buddy? This is a different Staples than we had in the commentary booth earlier on. Joe Staples team was in here earlier. That's Jamie Staples. Who, uh, on Twitch all the time. Yeah, he's crushing it on Twitch. I hear a lot about him. I started following him on Twitter. He's a very interesting guy. He is. I don't think I ever met him. We'll get the totals up for you soon, Staples. Our big winner, though, right now is Torelli, who's up nearly 20,000. Canuli is, uh, in second place, and over a two-day span, Canuli is up about 30,000. Not on you. So funny how poker is can be so results-oriented in the short term, and this is not to take anything away from Torelli's game. He's a great player. But you're talking about spots where, I mean, set over set, Nut flush over top set. <laughs> Sometimes you run good. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't doesn't make you a better or a worse player than anyone else. Some, someone's always going to run the best. But it, as long as you're playing the best, you're always going to work. It's always going to work out in the end. But like you said, I mean, over the long run, it all it all tends to even out. Let's do show one. The best players are going to win the most on the games they win and lose the least when they lose. You guys want to play? Well, an orbit of that. No shot. Come on, it'll be. We'll try it for one orbit. We're going to have see Gentile is a free agent. He's got the Poker Night in America hat on today. Yesterday was he's repping the 88.com. It'll be so much pride. No, Dude's like a total slut. <laughs> slut for hire. <laughs> what are they trying to? What, what game are they trying to play? Do seven? That's a possibility. I'm not sure what. This, but do seven was what I was thinking. So. Or was it show one card? No, it's definitely not going to be able to pick. pick but you guys can pick. Like, you just I, showed your one card. Okay, so it's show one card if you play a hand. Wow. This is shadow. Bro, if you don't turn one card over, I'm going to rip both of them over. You want to yeah, they, they, they want to show one card. Away. You're not turning one of the cards over? No. I want to put the sickest beat on you with one card shown. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to just put the most vicious beat on I think this is a great game. I think our best move is to be silent for a few show. minutes You're here and let them do the talking. The game if you don't agree to play. That's going to be the option. Everyone else is in besides you. Oh, wow. How so do what, what do I have to do? Like, I'm like, only... No, no, this, this hand is not on. <laughs> this hand yeah, yeah, is normal because he's, uh, he's, he's going to be picked up from the game for an orbit. Little... We're going we're gonna to play one orbit yeah. of one card up, one card down. What's okay. it mean? Will you play the hand? So you should be able to choose which card No, no, no. It should be the first card down. deal the first card up. Yeah, dealer should deal the first round up. And that way he's forced to do it and he can just fold, like, yeah. Yeah. I'll do it if Travell does it. I ain't never said I wasn't doing it. Yeah, Travell's doing it. My key. My key. <laughs> Jack 10 8, two spades out there. We came with a pair of 10s open ended. Please, wait, wait, wait. Please put a spade out there. So McKean's not showing. Canole. Either is Canuli. So it's just Dentali. <laughs> it seems like Dentali was under the assumption that everyone was going to show one card. It I'm gonna, okay. it didn't happen. I'm not a genius, but I'm going to say right now, that's a negative EV play. <laughs> okay? If you're the only one playing the game. <laughs> I do think if Dentali can convince the table to play the game, It'll benefit him because I, I, I think that he's probably the worst table of reading <laughs> cards. No, thank you. The best time in the game is when is when Dentali takes a bad beat. And I love Dentali. I never root against him, but I do kind of root for him to take bad beats because he really blows up. And when we're playing tournaments or cash games, it's the same. He can never take a beat. So it's great to watch him, and it's great for TV when he takes a beat. Does he go on tilt after that as well? Oh, he goes insanely on tilt. So he's one of those guys where you actually might put yourself in a negative EV spot to give him a bad beat knowing that 
he'll just spew off after the fact. For that, not only for that, but just for the entertainment value yeah. alone, it's just great. I mean, you saw how he acted yesterday when Samantha, uh, the girl, yeah. um, bluffed him with a big pot. He couldn't believe it. He he was, he came on the break. He came and found me on the break and was cursing and going nuts, telling me how she did this to him and he couldn't believe it. He didn't think she had it in him. He's just nuts. But you gotta love the guy. Jamie Kirstetter actually tweeted uh, at one point. She said. Uh, the greatest thing in like poker deal, is bluffing the Antali and then showing it to him. <laughs> it really is. Especially like a, a, from a girl's point of view, it probably is even oh. better. Face up. No, no, we want to deal to be face up. It'll just absolutely burns no one him. One makes a mistake. Oh, there you go. One card face up for everyone. Yeah. So they are doing it. So they are. So they got it started. This will be interesting. I've never even seen this game played. I don't think it's a game. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> Your tens yeah. are looking live, boy. <laughs> this is sort of like, uh, no, Indian, no, 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 is it called no, 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 Indian poker? Yeah, when you put it on your head? Yeah. Yeah, why would I play? Why would we play that? Yeah, game? I was like, yeah. <laughs> look, if all tins, why would he we called. play? Why would or we just play? stop? Or you fold? Uh, yeah, do we fold. flip it over one? God, no, no, do not flip it over. Cards when they fold? Do not show your other card. That was my card. Oh, okay. Baylor's doing it for us, and I will go for him. Oh, what's his name? Was like so, yeah. I can tell you for, for sure Sean's going to be the best player at this game. <laughs> yeah. like any game that you develop that no one's ever played before, yeah. Sean's always going to be the first one to figure it out. So he'll love any new variation at any time. He knows he's the, he's the sharpest, smartest guy at the table. And not just this table, pretty much any table in poker. I think that's what pure poker is. I mean, growing up, you and I are probably the same. We played, like, you played Dealer's Choice, right, with your friends? Right, yeah. Where your buddy would just invent a game, and you have to figure it out on the fly. Yeah. To me, that's what poker players are. You know, okay, if you're a guy home and you figure out, hey, I know how to master Nolem and Hold'em. Okay. But if you play all the games, yeah. and you're quick on your feet, like Sean Deeb is, you'll be better at every game, including Nolem and Hold'em. He is, he is the sharpest guy <laughs> in the shed. Does anybody have a pair time. here? <laughs> Yeah, okay, terrell has got a pair of nines here. He bets 450. Is his nine showing? I got through the club. That's the only part of it I'm wondering. No, you don't. No, you don't. no do not show the other one. It ruins the game. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. I wouldn't do that. This might turn into a game. No, no, it's cool to see one. We're gonna do I, I, that's why I said in orbit, I think, all we can do. Yeah. It's interesting. It's a fun little game. Nah. Top pair and three flush. Like. Rep's also another one that will figure yeah, out the game really so quickly. Yeah, he strikes me as kind of a game theory okay, guy. Yeah, both okay, both yeah. Sean and Rep will have a big advantage yeah, in doing this. And, and okay, this the the actually will hurt the youngest guys. Even though they're they're great new limit players, the youngest two guys, Joe and Tommy, might be the least seasoned and, and, and just more naive in the, these kind of situations. So it'll, it'll hurt. it benefits them to just play straight in the limit hold'em. But I'm sure they're willing to gamble and have some fun, so this is great for everyone. Yeah. I'm stuck. I need to get back even. All I know is so far. What did you fold? I'm sorry. Five of space. Okay. Sorry. And there's also a stud element to this in terms of, like, you now know... Not only the cards in the flop, but you know another nine yeah. cards that have been exposed. It's sort of like stud poker, where you got to <laughs> remember the up cards, see what cards yeah. are burned that you can't That's hit for sure. on the turn river. You know what the sick thing about it is, is that... So, uh, Lux, I'm just looking at this Twitch stream now. Now I can see people <laughs> typing, and I see Lux Eterno says, Glance, why do you say you have to love this guy? And he's referring to Natali. I just love him because he just blows up, and he gets out of line. Look, uh, at Parks, we had to throw him out for a year. He's a good friend of mine. We had to throw him bad for a year because he got out of line with the floor guy. But uh, I just, like, having a finish, he just can't help himself. He can't really uh, you can't really blame people for when they can't help themselves. And he, he's not doing it. It's not an act, so... I mean, it's just the way he is. Set of fours here for Deep. Got a pair. Now, everybody knows he's got a pair of fours. <laughs> now, nobody else is a pair, up or anywhere. So everybody knows that Deep is ahead. And that's really interesting. See, that's, I mean, to me, this is kind of like, it's fascinating. It's like everybody knows that Deep's got the best hand. But Alex's not Including going anywhere. Including Torelli. But Torelli's open-ended. But now Alec knows, <laughs> say, a king comes. Alec knows he has the nuts versus Sean in, in this game because Sean can never have ace-queen. Right. Whereas in Litton Regor, no limit hold him. If a king comes, he always knows that it could be the second best. Yeah, hand. the best hand the best hand Deep could have is actually what he has. Right. Before I have you double me up again, relax. This game get really weird. Hey, <laughs> this game can get really weird. We both didn't catch it, so. <laughs> Joe McKeon, my buddy. Let's have this on film. I'm so really interested to see how Deep plays this now. Him. So Sean checked check the flop with an intention of raising. Yeah, he's going to raise, and he does. Wow, big raise, 3,000. So 
This game is eight hundred dollar bet from Torelli. D makes it twenty nine hundred. Back over to Torelli. He has no, he has no back door. So it's really uh, tough for Torelli to call now because his hands sort of face up, like um, because he has a queen up, so he knows he's the best yeah. hand he can have is queen jack. Right, or he has king, king queen or ace queen or queen nine. There's not too many hands he can have, so it's really tough for this game to get that kind of deep action where there's many streets of betting. All although I want to throw this at you. I always think about like straight draws and stuff like that, where you've got your your actual outs and then your bluff outs. Well, if he's got a queen up, that's what he could sell king queen. So if an right, ace right. comes, he can represent. Right. If a nine comes, he can represent. And obviously, if the eight or the king come off, he makes the nuts. Right. <laughs> that might be part of it as well. Like if he knew that Sean had a set, he would definitely call because he knows he's going to get paid off. But if he thinks Sean only has fours or ace four or even like four or five, it's not probably it's probably not worth it. Other because he doesn't know if he's going to make money if he hits one pair. Well, let's deep limped in actually. Deep is not in the blind. So 10-4 and jack-4 are probably not in his range. Right, right. So it's like he's got here a set of fours or ace-4 suited. Or ace-4 suited. Or 4-5 suited. All right, he's bluffing. This is the wine pot? Because of that, because of that, if... He calls. Because of that, if Alec made a, a pair on the turn, it might be hard for him to get off of it. And Deeb knows right now he's got the nuts. Right. Torelli's best hand he could have is queen-jack. Someone's gonna get this is this is actually I, I love this stuff. <laughs> it's just gonna be how Alec figures out what's what's going on here. So basically, he's, he only loses to one. He's only drawing dead to one hand to four four, right? Because he doesn't think Sean's gonna limp him with ten four or jack four. Right, but when but so when, when deep when deep check raises and shows a four, right. You know he doesn't have jack four. You know he doesn't have ten four. He's repping a set of fours here. Yeah, that's what he's repping, but it's going to be interesting. Is Alec thinking, well, it's a new kind of game, and is, is Sean trying to one up me of here? Well, he definitely could. So, uh, do I if I hit a pair of queens or nines on the river, am I good? So maybe I want to call. You know, he's got a, it's right. a lot more added to it. Well, and if the ace comes off, can I rep? If a nine comes off, can I rep it? I don't know. There was a circus going on. No queen jack, I guess. Hold up, we got a, we got a bet on. <laughs> no queen jack for Alec. Are we betting on Sean's other card, right, Mike? Uh, uh, yeah, we got a $25. We we got a show. Show. $25. Come on. What, was it 325 rep for the one? Yeah. $25. What card is This is no good. Uh, Sean, too. Sean, Sean had. Smart this, is, this, is, this is for the camera. Sean had more. jack balls. 150 for the last one. He knows that he knows that he can never have two pairs. He has four. He had four nothing. That was all a bluff. I thought you, you said you know exactly Good read to tell you. Bro, I'm telling you, at 4 nothing. <laughs> you said it. It's the worst of reading the game. I, I'm not, dude, I'm not, I, I, he's, he's hysterical. He did this He did this all day yesterday. He didn't get one right. <laughs> That's funny. Not one. What are you saying? <laughs> I was going to agree with you. Oh, so now you have only four jacks. I mean, just randomly you think you get one right. He didn't have four jacks. Stay in this game well, at least he knew he didn't have four jack. <laughs> Dantali said he definitely didn't have four jack. <laughs> the funny thing is, the interesting thing about the way that Ham played out. No, I mean, if you have queen jack there, so much better than all you guys. I have to. I don't know how much your hand changes. Well, he's not folding for it. It's, he's, it's certainly not. Your hand doesn't change either. Uh, you know, Sean's got you pretty dead, or you have him crushed, but. But he's going to call. He's going to see the river in that case for 4000 This will be the hand that I, I, I suppose, yeah. But, I mean, you realize that <laughs> Deeb's, Deeb's probably got a lot more fours in his range, pocket fours in his range than anything else. I know it's hard to flop a set, but when you factor in that he, he, he limped in, you see a four. I don't know if he has more four pocket fours in his range, but that's what he's repping. Right. So, because he, he has probably more four five suited or ace four suited. <laughs> just a game when there's a four. So is it just a game of chicken, though? Yeah, that's basically that's what it is. If you have queen jack, you're right. just calling, and then if if uh, that's Deep moves all in, yeah. if Deep moves all in, you're just going. Do you have five four? Or do you have right. four? And you don't want to get in a game of chicken with Sean. That's the problem. <laughs> well, you know this money's not. I mean, he plays far bigger than this. <laughs> No, the money is not a factor for either of them. This is a small yeah. game for them, and that's Good what point. makes that's what makes poker night in America so fun. Is because it's not a huge, enormous game where every little street matters, every bet matters. Easy where these guys can gamble and uh, and have some fun. Well, I'm right. saying for the players in the yes. game. Generally speaking, if we were playing, uh, you know, 250,000 buy-in and we were playing 500,000 <laughs> blinds, there wouldn't be this laughing and this camaraderie going on. There wouldn't be this slow rolling and, and people. 
you know, having fun. So we got a raise here from Torelli, who's 1-9 is up. Canuli has three bet here. I'm not sure if she's showing the king or the queen. Thomas folds the ace-10. I think it's a good lay down, considering oh the action is not fold, not closed, and it goes back to Trelli, who could make a play. The best hand Trelli can have here is the nines. You don't like it? I don't think I don't it is. Like it either. I think I just stop. This is the one that's kind of interesting, too. Trelli can't... I thought the hand with me and Al was really interesting. Trelli can't really four-bet this, because Canuli can play perfect against him. Canuli's showing a queen. Yeah. Trelli's showing a nine. He's out of position. You can't three bet, right? You can't three bet because you know. I mean, I actually think Torelli's hand is face up. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so now Canuli can make an easy fold. There's nothing you can do. It just has to fold. Yeah, of course. But I think you can even fold queens or kings. I mean, Torelli's just got yeah. so many. Nines are. He raised and then called the three. There, nines are such a huge part of his range, right? Pre flop. There's one joke everybody's going to get stacked every other hand. But it's weird because Torelli couldn't. F if if Torelli four bet, Canuli can play perfect. He can call when he's getting the right, right. odds. So it does, it, I think it does take a little of the action out of the game. Oh, of course, yeah. Is he showing the nine of hearts? No, I'm showing the nine of hearts up there. Forget it. Never mind. For a second, I thought it was five four with the nine of a uh, different nine. <laughs> but it's a strip deck. Yeah, Canuli's just waiting. Just throw your hand away. <laughs> See, no, me, me now I think it's a sick game. Everyone else is like, boring. I think this is a really sick game. Yeah. I think it's pretty interesting. You want two pots? But I we're done with it. I just wanted to, no, to uh, I don't think anybody likes the game. Like the orbit. Like the orbit. I just, real, I just realized when I'm on Twitch, I'm a little slow to this. So I wanted to tell my 13-year-old son that we're on Twitch because I know he watches all the video game streams on Twitch. Right. And, uh, you know, I know it's a, Twitch is like a big thing to the, him and his friends. So I figured I'd give him a text. I didn't, it took, took me two hours to realize that. But What's your son's name? Harrison. Hey, Harrison. What's going on, man? I'm just going to lead every time with 9 x I don't like this game. It's so <laughs> sick, actually. <laughs> I, I, I think can't be hidden anymore. That Twitch is huge. People, I, didn't, I didn't realize it really until my son started showing me, but That's Twitch is so big. It's, it's, it's unbelievable how many kids, teenage kids, are watching Twitch video game streams all the time. Doesn't Amazon own Twitch? <laughs> I'm not sure. I think it's Amazon who bought them. Yeah. But I mean, poker is, is so small on Twitch. Oh. Like, some of these games I've never heard of, um, oh, yeah, the these war games and these uh, the, the, the Xbox games and the PlayStation games, there's, they got millions of viewers. Yeah. For sure the hand Hopefully poker will be I got like into that, the wrong so. commentary business. I should have yeah. been, been doing commentary on like Starcraft. Call of Duty. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like 20 grand. Madden or something. Seriously, how much is it? Oh, this I'm is counting for you. Great fucking TV. <laughs> <laughs> please record uh, this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Record it, please. Shit. Uh, slightly over 20, Tommy. <laughs> slightly over 20? I think they got like two more hands. It's like one card up thing. Excellent game. <laughs> Apparently Amazon sold <laughs> Twitch for $980 million. I, I, I wow. So Joe just moved in because like he's showing a, a king. Was like a, um, what's the, and he moved in for called? such a big overbet over, uh, just, what is it, the tally was in for 100? It's just that everyone has a lower card, so he knows the worst case scenario is somebody has a pair. I mean, it's a much easier game. And he's flipping. Yeah, exactly. But if you know, if they call, you know, at least he's flipping. But they probably can never call. And it just so happens they both do have pairs. It's on you. They're pretty sick if you had kings or aces. So, and but the thing is, Canoli knows that Joe probably would never move in with two kings. Did Canoli call? What do you want to do? He Canoli called, called. because yeah, Canoli figured out that Joe would never move in with Kings. What's the point of moving in with Kings when they're, well, I mean, they're showing you, a card? Unless you get in a leveling war. Right. Unless you get in a leveling war and that's you. But it's so easy for him to play post-swap post when they're showing the one card. Right, exactly. <laughs> Maybe this is wrong because I literally only Are they running it more than once? Yeah. A lot of outs here for McKeon. A jack, a king, or an ace. Yep, ten outs. Club is a bad card yeah, yeah, for him. I would say Canoli. He's got the nine of clubs in his hands. Hey, you guys pay for the other bottle of wine as well. Sure. But Jack would give them both a straight. Oh, yeah. McKeon obviously would take it as Broadway, though. Ace, King, or Jack, and there's the nine. And Canuli is going to win. I think they're going to do two runouts here. And I'm gonna guess I'll take Joe on the second run out. Yeah. There's <laughs> too many cards left. There are way too many cards. There you go. <laughs> Plus the nine hit already. Club draw still. Yep. No. Only a nine now. We're going one nine in deck. One out left. One nine left. Nine! No, not a nine. They chop it up. 
<laughs> what am I supposed to do with this hand? I don't know. After I like play it like this, I limp in. I'm like, what am I? Doing? I think it'd be pretty sick leveling. It, it, to move all those kings races, just knowing that right. your opponent would think, well, you'd never do this with aces or kings. Right. You always have ace king here. I'll call because I'm getting the right price. And you're drawing almost dead. And the thing is, if Joe three bets there, or raises or three bets, whatever, those guys could never come over the top. Of so the pot will stay small. So it might be right to just shove there. I think Joe made the right play. Oh, we just saw that with. Uh, I mean, with the king queen versus nines two, two yeah. hands ago. You would have. I mean, you never want to be in a spot this where your opponent can play perfectly against you. I don't give a fuck. You don't, you, don't, you don't understand. When he said I called. Joe's soul floated out of his body. Well, I like, would put one variation to this game. He didn't know. Like, What's that? He has ace nine. Oh, <laughs> Add a third card. <laughs> yeah. 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 Each player has to pitch one, like, like, show one, show one keep card. one. <laughs> That'd be interesting. So it's kind of pineapple-ish, a little pineapple-ish, but the player gets to choose which one it is. Instead of instead of it being random, I think that would be a lot of strategy. Which one are you going to show? Well, if you yelled that down to Sean down there, I'm sure he'd start it up. Let's do it. <laughs> We're about uh, get three cards, show one, pitch one, yeah, and keep one down. So me and Tucker are in a stadium right now. Uh, it's like a basketball arena or, or a concert stadium where we're up in the booth about, I guess, 60 feet up in the air above the table. So we can actually look over the ledge and stadium seating and, and see the table and let them know. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, we're in this event center. It would be nice to have get a camera up here if we can get a vantage point from up here so the, so the people watching can see that. It's very interesting to set up here. It's a negative free roll. It's a nice event center, yeah. It's a nice place. I, like I mean, this is a this is a stadium that probably fits ten thousand people for a concert or something like that. That the uh, yeah. the tournament yeah. and and the, uh, the streaming table is on. It's funny too. I went to school in upstate New York, and I I went to Turning Stone Resort Casino when I was a kid, but it certainly wasn't a resort back then. I mean, I came here. There were like seven blackjack tables. Four roulette tables, and that I was did, it, and a, and a little I diner. Yeah. yeah, and we drive here from from school and play, and I loved it. You know, just cause you have to be 18 to play, so it was like, get my gamble on. Um, what a business! But Start the game out is that small. Yeah, the game is the the place is. Uh, I, I have yeah, not been here in years, and it's changed that's night and day. We were playing a, a fun just one two no limit game with the with the crew in the poker room on uh, <laughs> Friday night, and the room was absolutely <laughs> packed. It was about the most packed the poker room I've seen in a while. Yeah, yeah the game's it's nice, actually. I, uh, I jumped in the room last night uh, after, we, after we did the stream. I had dinner with a couple of guys in the steakhouse. Lost credit card roulette. You can look at my picture online on Twitter. Steakhouse is good. I don't know if you've eaten Steakhouse there. is great. Yeah, went up there, had some steak, and then uh, me and my buddy went to the poker room. <laughs> Played a drop of PLO and then went to bed. I was just watch me like trying to figure out what I'm doing. I ate, uh, ate at the steakhouse the last two nights with Sean and his wife Ashley and yeah. their little baby Evan. Oh, I know. Like, the one year old Evan. The people who get it looks like a miniature <laughs> half Ashley, half Sean, and uh, he's probably going to wind up being a pretty pretty smart gambler when he grows up. I'm guessing. Well, hopefully, he looks more like Ashley. <laughs> She says she says he looks much more like her. Yeah, I'm actually a little disappointed I didn't bring my wife and my kid. I think uh, it would have been fun to see my kid with uh, with Evan. Yeah. They're only about eight months apart. That's just taking years older. Yeah. It's like two. He's almost two. He he's just turned two. Just turned two. Got it. This one and then three more. I don't miss those days. My kids are uh, I think you like 13 and 10. Like no, you don't like Jay? You're, you're, you're overchanging <laughs> diapers? I've been playing over that for a it's, long time. Yeah. It's not boring. I just don't have, like, the, the creativity kind of, like, lacks in it a little bit, right? Yeah. It's just kind of, like, too mathematical. My kid's kind of, my kid's gotten to the point where he's manipulating me now. Right. Because. Yeah, they get smart. When, uh, yeah, when he, uh, you know, sometimes to change his diaper, just easier to give him the iPhone. So he knows how to manipulate. He knows how to go on and like go to YouTube and like find like a Donald Duck video. So now he'll come over to me and he'll go, because he knows if he gets his diaper changed, occasionally gets the iPhone. He'll go to me and go, Daddy, poo poo, poo poo. And I'll be like, Dude, you don't have anything in your diaper. And he's just doing it so he can get the headphone. That's great. I'm like, Dude, really? Pavlov's <laughs> dog. Oh yeah, he's totally like yeah, exactly. He's totally playing me. First couple of times, I was like, okay, let's go change you. And I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I know those days. He's like, sucker. 
Twice. So I'm reading the Twitch, the chat now. If you guys want to shoot off some questions about any, any of the players in the game, I know them pretty well, and or you want to ask me something, yeah, shoot. shoot. Yeah, ask me personal to read questions. <laughs> the more personal, the better. <laughs> Can't promise I'll answer them, but come on. I'll, I'll, pro I'll definitely answer the personal questions about the players in the game. There you go. Hanson getting busy here. Pre-flop. And again, this is strategy here. Hanson knows the best hand. He, 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 at worst, he's flipping against yeah. nines. He knows that. So it's interesting that Sean called out a position with this hand. Yeah. Well, the best hand, the best hand that Deep can have right now is king nine, and he probably doesn't. Now he still could have nines. Right. Oh, right now. All right, so we're starting to get some of these questions. Aaron Rosie said, what did Glance do before poker, and how was the transition family-wise? Um, for After I finished grad school, I was a clerk on the options floor of the stock exchange in Philadelphia and uh, worked my way up and became a trader for was trading options and derivatives for 10 years and uh, kind of f fell into poker and as a hobby and then started doing it uh, as sort of like a small business. And then uh, for the last, like, 14 years, I'd say now, I've been doing it, and it was a tough transition family-wise, but I had a very supportive wife, which made it very easy for me. So, uh, you know, I'm lucky for that. If It's really, really impossible if you don't have a supportive wife in that spot. Check, check here. Let's hear. More questions in a second. So the turn's an eight. Now, Deep could have nine, eight in his hand. Right. Hanson could have Jack, Jack, and could have very easily checked back Jack, Jack on a flop. Yeah, I don't like Bart's check back, because it's just with, with the information that Deep has a nine on the flop, you just have to fire. Yeah, Jacks are. Jack should it's not, be. It's not like it's, no, right. it's not like if he fires, um, Deep's going to re represent King Nine. First of all, he's showing a Nine of Spades. Yeah. King of Spades is on board. It's yeah. not like Deep can have King Nine of Spades. So it, it's very, very, very unlikely that he would get a call on the flop. So yeah, I think I, I in this form, he should have bet. By the way, Hanson could also have King Jack. He could rep King Jack. He could rep Jacks. He could easily have King Jack when he's staring at a Nine because he knows he can't get re raised. Right. I, I tend to agree with you. And DB almost never has King Nine, exactly. So DB1122 says, Glance, I play with you at Poker Night in America in Pittsburgh. Can I get in Poker Night in America, Florida? Um, DB, I don't know who you are by that, those initials, but I can tell you that Florida is already booked. I know there's like 22 players going for Florida for three days and a lot of big names, so that should be pretty exciting, but I can't get in there. But uh, I think we're going to Pittsburgh in November. I Maybe up there. Probably the best game to slow roll. Oh, yeah. When, when, when the other guys <laughs> yeah. I think I missed a few questions on there, but I can't. I don't even know how to scroll back. Hanson looks constipated. What is he doing? Yeah, it's true. Like, you're always right. <laughs> um, hot Walter. Matt, I think I heard a while back the park should be moving program to casino building. Has that happened or is that in plan? Um, it's kind of been the plans for the last three years since I've been there, and I wish it, it did happen. It was supposed to happen a couple of times. It never has happened, and I don't think it's going to happen at this point, so pretty disappointed. I'm sure uh, you are too, and hopefully one day it does happen. Hans, uh, Deep checked like seven minutes ago. Hanson is trying to think <laughs> if he can do anything here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if he has jacks, he's got the nuts, and he's got to know that. See, I think I think Hanson feels like he's overmatched by Deeb in this kind of new game that he's never played before. So he's really apprehensive to do anything. So. Don't have a king. <laughs> and I think right, Deeb's confidence is really is really bought. You have ace nine, right? Yeah. I see. Yeah. Oh, so Deeb bluffed. He must have moved all in. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> Deep okay. called and Hanson called? I mean, Apparently, that was a tank. That makes more sense than him checking wow, and then yeah. tank. That's why he was tanking. By the way, so it's a pretty <laughs> bad play from Deep. <laughs> what is Deep? It's really hard for, yeah, it's really hard for Bart to call. And, I mean, it is hard for Deep. It's hard for Bart to call, but for it doesn't make any sense yeah. for Deep. What's the best hand? By the way, the turn was an eight. The river is a seven. But it doesn't make, on the turn, the best hand Deep can have is two nines. He wouldn't move all in with two nines. Yeah. He doesn't have king nine. He might have been, Bart might have put in his head that he had an open ender, he had 9-8, and just was calling with reverse 9-8 on the no, turn. No, no, the turn was an 8. 
Oh, the turn was an eight. The turn was okay. an eight. And there were seven. So, but he, he's not moving all in with it. Right. He's not moving all in with showdown value. Really weird spot. I wish I could have heard, heard what they were saying. He did say deep. Did say I don't have a key. <laughs> okay. And like I don't always continue with ace nine. I played that way. Yeah, you might just fold three flop. I don't think the I just thought that. So Mike. That makes more sense. I apologize for the graphics mix up, guys. Uh, the way that hacks. So it went check, check on the flop. By the way, the check on the flop was genius. If you could have do some bluff, I don't, I don't think that was his plan, but it worked out really well. Well, that's why I was like, "What is Bart? Why is Bart taking like six minutes to like check it back?" <laughs> Where they check like. Yeah. By the way, he's now Hanson just went from down seven thousand to up fifty five hundred. Good for him. Are you kidding me? And it's a big confidence booster for him to beat Sean in the hand because he never beat Sean in the hand. Remember the hand uh, yeah. Kings versus Aces and the big ten K pot limit hold him well. this summer? Well also early on today when you were there. Uh uh, Deep tried to bluff him and then hit a four on the river. Oh, yeah, the four deuce. Four deuce King, yeah. against Hanson Jace King. <laughs> Mike Talley, 94, says, Matt, my buddy John, who always wears a Patriots hat, said he knocked you out of tourney yesterday. Is he lying? Um, I don't want to say he's lying because I don't remember if the guy had a Patriots hat. I don't even remember who watched me, to be honest. So uh, <laughs> he's probably telling the truth. Oh, that is the first card off the deck? Oh, never mind. Which I thought it was him for some reason. You were yeah, like, well, really yeah. I mean, unless you unless Deeb is leveling <laughs> Bart into calling specifically with Ace Jack, he never has a pair. I mean, yeah, like it, it doesn't make already. much sense. It, I guess, and that's what Bart figured out. So unless, unless you have history with your opponent, where you know he's going to go the next level, and he's going to always call with Ace Jack because it doesn't make much sense, and you get crazy value from your two nines or your nine eight, unless you're doing that. It makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> it's, I mean, I got to think about the game. Oh, well, Dentali is finally going to begin. So this is what I root for. See, I don't root for Dentali to lose, but I do root for him to take bad beats, as I said. So no, I don't want him to lose. Yeah, bad beats This is one spot worse. where I would love to see him take a bad beat because he'll go nuts. It'll be great for the show. Oh, a king on the turn would just be so oh, great here. Can we somehow make that happen? <laughs> can we please somehow make that happen? It might. Check, check. Ah, uh, Turn to nine of spades, wow, though. spade. Torelli's, Torelli's now open-ended. Torelli is open-ended with the spade draw. It's the best card in the deck for him. It's short of a king. See, but it's hard for him to, to, to bet because if he has, he's showing the ten of spades, so it's like when Mikey has a jack or a king or an ace in his hand with the king, it's not like he's ever getting it through like when, when both cards are turned face down. No, so, no, definitely not. So it's like an entirely different game. Uh, someone on the chat, Daniel says, "Rep forward to King of Sand." So there's only one king left that we could hope for in the river. Hey, let's get, let's hit it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm okay with a red eight right now. Or I, I'm okay with a three of spades. I don't care. <laughs> three of spades is fine. And this but is, I could already, I have no hate for Dentali. I, I could, if Dentali loses the hand, I could already tell you what he's going to say. He's going to say, "Enough for this jerk off game. I can't take this <laughs> shit." <laughs> he's <laughs> bullshit. We're playing regular poker. He's going to go nuts. But he want, He's going to win the hand unless unless yes, correct. unless he folds. You know the problem with the, the one thing with this game as well. It's interesting. And we saw the last two hands play right. out. The last hand with Barton D became very interesting. Right. This hand as well. Torelli's in a spot where against a lot of players. Once he sees weakness, he might have turned. He had such a big draw, he might have check raised a turn. For sure, but he can't in this spot with that card. The showing. best hand he has is right. ace 10. It's just too likely that he has the queen 10 of spades or 10 8 of spades. He's not check raising with ace 10 ever. Right, right. So it's, yeah, you can't do those things in this game. I mean, if you're never check raising with ace 10, then you always have queen 10 of spades. Your opponent can always call you and play 100% perfectly on the river. Yeah, flip your oh, first card off. Yeah. Where did, where did, so where did he start? Uh, Tommy's. Run uh, down there and tell him my suggestion. Or, no, Mike was <laughs> three cards. Gonna yell down. Pitch one. <laughs> and turn one up. Anybody got red? I can text him. I can, I'll text Sean. I got one left. Can I? Just for the next twenty. Would you think about it? Hold it at nine. The only problem is they're on a half hour delay, so it won't happen for a half hour, even if they, if they like the idea. Well, it'll happen right now, but we'll only see it in a half hour. Yeah. Keep squeezing that card, it might change. <laughs> God, why do I like you so much? Really? I'm fun to play with. <laughs> Talk one of you guys to get dealt three cards. Would this is my text going through. Yeah. One face up. No, 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 no. Get yeah. dealt three cards. 
You player player pitches one. Yeah. Player chooses to turns one up and keeps one. Okay. Okay. Player does it. Pitch. Pre flop. Back. All pre flop. Pre flop. Then flip one face. But it's the player's choice. <laughs> Which one goes up? That's I think that's where the game really becomes interesting. Which card do you choose to go up? Porter with kings. He makes it 500. Oh, All right, the Texas set. So in about 30 minutes, we're going to see Sean Deeb get a buzz. He's going to reach in his pocket. Yeah. So the showing the one card makes the game smaller. Other than that case where Deeb just got well, out of line and, and tried to bluff with the ace nine. Like pre-flop, there's not going to be that many big confrontations. Only the best is turning. So. So. I, I think that was a matter of Deeb thinking Bart doesn't normally play this high, and he could bully him. Yeah. So he just definitely holds but over Bart, Bart. Yeah, but Bart plays. I mean, Bart plays like plays 150-300 OE. So. So this is one of those spots where kings versus fives. If if Thomas fl uh, flops a set, he's never going to get paid off that huge nope. in this game because it's showing a five. And Porter always knows. But you all Porter but always knows he has the best hand because a red five is showing. But when a five comes, even if Thomas doesn't have the set of fives, he's always going to have to rep the five in this game. You've got to yeah, you've got to balance it. I think I mean I would imagine you've got to balance it occasionally. So if a five comes off, sometimes you have six five. And you rep the set, and then sometimes you've got a set of fives. Well, I mean, like, I thought it was more like a edge straight combo. There's some big commotion down at the table right now, so I guess we're going to find out in about 30 minutes. It's like PLO, like, some, you know? A big funny hand or, or somebody getting a fight something down there. But we'll have to wait for that on the stream, because we're, we're 30 minutes late up here, just like everyone watching. Yeah, we are watching this, uh, this stream at the exact same time that you are at home. We're also doing it live. A lot of times you watch a show on TV and it's edited. The commentators know exactly when to kind of like shut up so you can hear the table talk. We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I've done a lot of live streaming and, and uh, I have yet to be able to predict when people can talk. This game's pretty difficult. Or people do talk, I should say. Like, rep, I really couldn't call any bet you made. You know that, right? With my hand? Yeah. Sargon133 says, I hate this game. Would never ace play. And if you have Ace King, I'm screwed. There's like, I cannot call and play against you after the flop. So Deeb opens. And nobody's going to give him any action, it looks like, unless Canuli wants to come around. Ah, Canuli does. See, if I'm Canuli and I'm showing my four, if a four flops, I'm repping the set. For sure. You have to rep the set now with this kind of game. The problem is Deep always has the best hand here now. So now with Canuli showing a four, Deep can four parts especially. Deep can bet three streets because he's never gonna have the four deuce offsuit. The worst, if he had four deuce of hearts, it's possible, but the deuce of hearts is on the board. Canuli could have four six though. Right, but the same. That's the same thing as four. Four six is the same yeah, thing yeah, as four versus yeah, Deep showing an ace or a queen. <laughs> showing a queen. <laughs> a I actually had it. <laughs> Going back to what you said, I mean, I think some of the guys who have. Who haven't played as away? much other games <laughs> are a little bit <laughs> uncomfortable. Yeah. I didn't even look though. I'm just waiting for someone to take a big beat, like Dentali or or, or Travell, and then just say, forget this, guys. I'm, I'm, we're going back to this game. This game sucks. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I haven't got some time to think about it. Now, can we play show one card when you fold? No. No. <laughs> When you win the pot, you got to show one card. That's not, that's not, you just said show one Why don't we have the last person who folds shows both their cards? Generally speaking, I'll go off what whoever, if Matt Glance, who's alongside whoever, me here, said earlier. The, if you are wins, playing with inexperienced poker players, players, players or amateurs, and you have I'll poker and you have experience, yeah, not the person who wins. The more time, the oh, more so weird variations you, you instill in a game, okay. the bigger your edge will probably be. Yeah, this is basically sure. the epitome of what you're the epitome of what. I feel so game. much safer. If you're just joining us, you're watching the Poker Night in America live stream, 2550 <laughs> No Limit Hold'em. Really We're at Turning Stone in Verona, New York. Look <laughs> at <laughs> <laughs> that black six and it comes all diamonds. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> Okay, we're back to regular no limit hold'em now. Ah. Two cards now. I think it, I think that game. Like, I think somebody said it on the chat. This game is fun to switch it up to play, but not not so much to watch. Yeah. Gengar smile just put that on there, wow. so I think he's right. Yeah, I know. It's a and it's a neat it's idea. Fun not having two unknown cards. But more two cards down is probably a little bit better for the show. Get a raise here from Thomas. <laughs> I 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, the problem with that game, obviously, it becomes almost impossible to raise with small suited yeah. connectors and small pairs. Because you can just get hammered by right. any big cards. Okay. Uh -huh. So I guess the Jack of Spades is the burn card. Is it, the Jack of Spades must be the burn card, and the dealer flashed it over the middle of the table. So then it clicks, picks it up. That makes sense. Good read. Well, that's, uh, that sucks for Dentali. <laughs> Fives are still the best hand here. Back to normal, no limit hold'em. 25-50, no limit hold'em with $100 blinds. Big names at this final table. Final table. Big names at this table, I should say. So Cannoli flopped the flush draw. He called the bet of Thomas on the flop, I believe. Yep. Two November Niners here, one including, of course, Tom Cannuli in the black hoodie. On the, just the right side of the screen, you can see the orange shirt. That is Joe McKeon, who is our chip leader. I won't be surprised if Cannuli let out here, even though check on the flat, because he can't really call a bet. And now, Tom, the only thing Thomas can beat is a stone bluff, which Cannoli has, but I don't know if Thomas is going to make the call here. But he is stuck. It's more like he's going to make the call than he would have earlier before he lost his first buy-in. That's important to know, obviously, if you're Canuli or anybody playing against him, how likely is your opponent to call this? I mean, with Canuli leading out here, he's basically just repping a nine. Right, and if, and if he gets called here, he's going to give up on the river because he knows that if uh, Travell has a nine, he's just going to call on the turn. So he's not. I don't think Canuli is going to call on the river. Thomas is pretty tight. I'd like to see Thomas call here just so we can see what Thomas what uh, Cannoli does on the river. Yeah. Well, he lets it go. So Cannoli played, outplayed him there. Uh, Travell is uh, one of the tighter players at this table. And we continue on. Once again, tomorrow, final table of the Empire State Championship. I believe the original David Baker is still in that tournament. And that will be uh, live streamed here at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I never raised so no. Like a little tail on your soul there. Three hundred. I really want to own your soul. I want you to flip over like king seven of the <laughs> so sick. How sick would that be if, if you really, because you never really expect to get called. You never expect yeah, to get called no. ever. Your call can't be good. No, There's I, no way your call can no, be good. I know, but like, you just randomly spaz out for 20. I'm just like, well, like. Yeah, for like 400. I'm not that crazy. I'm having at the very least a card yeah, over Yeah, but you never else. think anything calls you. That's the problem. I agree. Appreciate you know, the tweets, like, guys. Geez. And that's what was in my but eyes. Of, like, I've played with you before, and I know your head's strong enough to put in 20 there. With I've got a mixed tweet. Tweets. About half the tweets are uh, hate the one card showing, and some people like dynamic. Yeah. I think for one round it was fun. For one round, yeah, I agree. But then I think the novelty might wear off pretty quick because you might not see as big pots as we're used to. The hammer tweets in says, "Whenever Dave says Canuli's name, I think of dessert." That would have been yeah, me too. I, whenever I see his yeah. name, I think that of dessert. That would have freaked me out. Yeah. Like, I've never folded king ten of these shots. Yeah. Yeah. So Deeb opened, I think, the 300 rep call pre-flop. They both missed the flop. <laughs> so the flop. And the turn, they both checked it down, yeah. and now yeah. to the river. And they see whoever bets going to, is going to win. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Gonna meet that. So if you guys don't know by now, the guy in the orange shirt, Joe McCann, he's the chip leader in the November 9 final table at the World Series. Overwhelming chip leader. Hey, are, are you familiar with the guys in the November 9? He, yeah, he has 35% of the chips. And then you got Thomas Cannoli uh, in the hoodie, and he has 12 million in chips in the, in the uh, main event. He's like sixth out of he's nine. He's sixth, yeah, exactly. Who's, uh, who's your favorite? Well, uh... I mean, I mean, obviously McKean's the I have favorite. a financial interest. In, <laughs> I, oh. have, I have a big piece of one of the guys, at Josh Beckley. Do you? Yeah, so I'm rooting for him for sure. Right. Um, I'm closest with Joe. Are you going to hedge and bet on other people? No, no. I'm, I'm going to root hard for Beckley. I'll be on the rail. I'll be right up front there. How many chips does he have? He is seventh. He's got the same amount of Nobody chips as, uh, as Cannoli. Um, Are you helping but, coach him? In the up in the uh, months, uh, he doesn't seem very interested in, in any kind of coaching. And I mean, he, any? He, he plays. He, I mean, he's playing great. He's been playing great the whole time. I don't want to get get in his head or mess anything up. So I think. Fair enough. I think from the way he feels, from what I've gathered, is is he wants to just keep it going the way it is. Mm -hmm. Jack and ten. Fault him. Jack ten four flop. Both Torelli and Deeb flop a gut shot to Broadway. Ace King still the best hand here. Well, congratulations. That's uh, great. If Josh busts, I will be. Uh, Taking off the Josh Beckley shirt and go, moving over to the to Joe Rail, even though I don't have a financial result, I'm definitely close with Joe. Speaking of November 9, Ryan Feldman from ESPN tweet uh, has put in there, Tuckman and Glantz. Patrick Chan, also a November 9er, is here and says hello to both of you. He's happy spending uh, his Sunday listening to your uh, lovely voices. Wow, thanks, Ryan. <laughs> well, Patrick's another guy I'll root for. There's four East Coast guys, and they all play at Parks and, and Bergada, and, and I've seen them in the tournament <laughs> circuit for a long time. You know, funny story, actually, as randomly as this was. Dee, by the way, with the ace of clubs as well um, as the ace queen. So we, I, I, see, I see both Ryan Feldman and Patrick Chan at the bike. And I say hi to Ryan because we're friends and everything. And, and, and I see Patrick, and I don't know why I said it, but I just felt it. I see Patrick, and I go, I think you're going to have a good summer, a big summer. And, really? And, and shoot, six weeks later, he makes the November 9th. It's amazing. I wish I had a piece of him. <laughs> no kidding. I know, right? Good guy, though. There's a lot of happy guys on the East Coast. There's four guys at the final table from the East Coast, and there's a, there's probably 20, 20 to 25 guys that have pieces of all those four of those four guys. It should be a lot of fun. It should be a lot of fun it's in be Vegas. Great rails. I will I will uh, I will be there for sure. Uh, I've been there in the past working it. I've commentated on it. It's been uh, it was definitely one of the highlights of my career commentating on it. But this year, I uh, I think I'm going to go as a fan. You're going to join the rail? Yeah, I'm friends with Max Steinberg. And, yeah, okay. and I thought you were right above that. I think he's a hell of a poker player. Oh, he's a great player. Very so, creative. I think I actually really might tough. go to, I think I'm going to go to Vegas because I know you can actually legally bet on the, on the, uh, you, you can bet on them down there. Right. I think I'm probably going to throw some money. And from the, from the little I know about Max, um, we have some, some similar friends, uh, but I don't know him personally. But I, the little I know of him, he will work the hardest of any one of the final nine to, uh, to improve his game between now and, and November. He's a re I mean, they're all smart guys. Let's not, you know. He's very analytical. He's got a great team. And he's got his twin brother that can help him. And the two of them, they're going to do. A, they're going to put a lot of time into it. Um, he'll come in prepared, that's for sure. I think you can get like six or seven to one on him, too. Hmm. Yeah, I think he's a great bet. Interesting yeah, he's fourth in chips, about twenty million. So I like one of these Twitch guys' names, Jamie Jamie Staples Belly Button. That's pretty creative. No one ever remembered it. Get a raise here from Porter with four three. Torelli calls. Canuli is uh, going to three bet this to fifteen hundred, so he makes it five x. My guess is it gets through. Torelli was talking about yesterday how he kind of hey, thinks really want a lot of players <laughs> overvalue small pairs. He'll get the divorce papers oh, okay. instead of a pair of So shoes. I don't <laughs> see Torelli calling this based on what he said yesterday. Thanks, buddy. And sure enough, cards go in the muck. Yeah, he was, he's priced out. Well, he was talking about it yesterday. He, just, he said he thinks that small pairs are, are way, way overvalued by yeah. no limit players. I would have to agree with that. It seems like you never flop a set. <laughs> well, even, and even when you do flop a set, though, it's so many things have to happen for right. you to the, win. The other guy has to have a real hand, and you have to get it to get paid off. And sometimes, even when you flop a set, you lose. You look at you look at. Right. I, I guess a great example is when when uh, Alec had Jacks and, and Sean D bet threes, and they flop set over set. So I wonder if if the situation was reversed and and uh, Alec had the threes pre flop. In Sean's seat, he might not have. He might not have uh, had that call. He might not have played the hand. Well, I think he's going to play it for one raise. I don't think he's going to call a three bet though. 
And we both guessed that D probably would have called a three back. Option. You ever yeah. play like stud, the option game where Ventali you play raising. Card sub and you replace one card? And then so like you see the flop, you bet on the flop, and then you have By the way, the option replace. Chabelle Thomas just keeps cards. blowing my mind because I keep thinking it's somebody different. Because now he's wearing a big yeah. gray hoodie. Very rarely, but huh. it's is it a bad game or a good game? So Sorry, Jimmy Bluffix asked Lance, if you were a November Niner, would you play in this in this game, yeah, sir? Game. And uh, the, the truth of the answer is I would definitely not play in this game. I think it's a pretty big disadvantage for Joe and Tommy to be at the table right now showing off their... Uh, you know their game, but maybe they're maybe they're smart enough or, or devious enough to just change up their game so much for the show versus what they're going to do in November. But uh, I probably wouldn't be able to do that sufficiently, so I'd probably just stay away until November, and then I do I do the TV shows after that. I was going to ask you, I, I, Torelli and I talked about that yesterday, and I said, "Wow, I go these guys are willing to basically put 16 hours of them playing poker on tape for their opponents for their opponents to view." But he pointed out something, and I thought it made a lot of sense that. This game today yeah, and yesterday doesn't even slightly resemble the dynamic that's going to be taking place in November. Oh, yeah. For sure. The chip counts are different. The stakes are different. The stage is different. One's a tournament with antes. One's just a cash game. And for those reasons, I wonder if there's that big a deal. I mean, unless you're giving up some live tells. I just don't think it can help. It can only hurt. Okay. So from that perspective, I just wouldn't risk it because it's the one time in their life they're going to be at this main event final table most likely. So. Good point. Wow, big flop for uh, for for Alec uh, yeah, for McCain. Joe McKeon. Yeah, McKeon's so got a gut shot. Yeah, Alec opened uh, mid with two aces, and and McKeon just floated on the button. Um, yeah, McKeon in position with a gut shot and the flush draw. Torelli without the ace of hearts in his hand, he's going to put a casibet out there with aces. Obviously, McKeon's never folding. Just a question of whether he calls here I think or raises. All, almost always raising. Because he could win the pot here, and there's too many cards on the turn. Well, he doesn't raise. No, but there's too many cards on the turn where just Torelli has to shut down. Like a seven on the turn, Torelli's going to shut down with any other pair. An a eight. heart, you know, it's going to it's going to shut him down. So I really like the raise on the flop. You know, Joe's building the pot where he ha he never is going to be that far behind anyway. And when he hits, it's it's more the pot's bigger, so he can he can get paid off bigger. But like almost almost all the cards that make Joe's hand on the turn. Torelli's going to check to him. Yeah, good point. A seven. Now, he can rep an eight, obviously. Right. But I, I, I tend to agree with you. I mean, if he raises the flop, there's a lot of hands he reps. Not only does he rep the flush draws, but seven, eight, he just set. Right. He just has a lot of equity on the flop. Like, if the flop was queen, seven, deuce, two hearts, I might like the call better. But on this kind of flop where just Alex is never going to bet the turn when Joe hits the turn. I really like raising the flop there and getting more value when you have a lot of equity. Is that part of your... And sometimes uh, you're going to win the pot there, too. When it comes to decision-making in terms of, like, whether you're going to raise or not, do you often think of, if I hit my card, will I get paid? Oh, for sure. That's, I mean, that's a major factor. <laughs> so, of course, Joe Joe hits the river like usual, like he's been doing the last few months consistently. <laughs> and I'm happy for Joe. Don't let, don't let think I'm not. But uh, he is really on a roll, and he just makes hands. So I, I, said, it, I said it earlier. He's the first one to admit it, though. Dude he's not has the, not lost a hand since day two of the main event. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. <laughs> so now he's going to crack aces. But, uh, you know, if he raised the flop... Alec would have called, and then he could have checked back the turn, and the pot would be bigger right now. And Frankly, he could have bet the, he could have bet the turn, too. Right, he could have bet the turn. But Alex was still going to call, and then he would have won a, a bigger pot. Yeah. Reps, Doug. Close. What's the play if you're Torelli? Are you check folding? Or is, it, is it a bet fold? I doubled up slowly. So that, he decides to bet. I mean, it's easy to say watching the hands, but it's bet fold, obviously. Um... But the thing is, I don't even know if Joe's going to raise. Yeah, he doesn't raise. It seems like an easy raise when you see the hands. But Joe thinks probably thinks he's not going to get paid off by worse. Yeah, I can, I can buy that. They're, they're pretty deep. They're both right. really deep. And if, if you raise here. Right. There's bigger flushes that beat him. And they're, you know, obviously Pocket sets. nines, pocket yeah, sixes. Right. I mean, is, is Torelli really, he bets 3,000. McKeon makes it 11,000. Is, is Torelli really going to? 
pay him off with two aces. Right. And yeah. the thing is, I, I just really like the raise in that spot on the flop. I think it makes the pan play a lot easier for Joe, and plus he's going to win the pot some of the time. And even even if he's forced to get it in, Alex, three bets a flop um, when he has aces, then Joe you know, is going to have like 45% equity anyway. So it's almost a flip. Um, and it, if the, the few times that, that Alex has flopped a set, you know, whatever, Joe's got a, a gut shot and a flush draw. It's not like the end of the world. The Twinkle says hello from France. Hi, poker stream. I like it. What is it? Uh, France, it is currently uh, like 1 in the morning, one thirty in the morning. Yeah. I like it. Six hours ahead. I think Francis. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it in. Sure. That I can believe. No. <laughs> Definitely not. So you got Sean Deeb there repping his Ted's fish fry shirt. That's a, uh, a fish fry up in Maine or not? Um, no, they're right in upstate New York. It's in upstate New York. That's six, uh, six locations. That's family. Family's business. And they, uh, that's where Sean grew up, you know uh, working in his family this business. Table gets, to, gets to talk about after November when I make this He's, He didn't give you one? Make you wear it? <laughs> <laughs> I got like three of them. It's funny because you're just gonna he, uh, he got yelled at by his either uncle, like, I think man, uncle I or cousin this summer because he, he didn't wear a Ted's Fish Fry shirt to his final, his bracelet, uh, Final table of Parliament holding 10K this summer at the World Series. So he learned a lesson now he's going to be wearing it at every final table or every TV table. Dintali with two pair. Now queens and fives. Ace in the river changes nothing. Anthony has been, ex I almost forgot he was at the table. So uh, Jamie Staples belly button asked an interesting question. How do I become friends with, with Sean Deep? The answer would be to have a lot of money and play poker, and you will become friends with Sean Deep. <laughs> that is in all a very honest answer. Yeah, in all fairness, he's a super nice guy. Super nice. I met him in 2008 in Kiev, and I was doing commentary for the EPT. We went and got some lunch. We became friends. We've been friends ever since. Um, I don't think he, he's not one of those guys that's it's not difficult to become friends with him. He's very, very if outgoing, you meet him. very friendly, very nice, you know. And, but he's just the thing is, he's just a super, super talented poker player. So uh, he just he has all the confidence in the world, and he doesn't care who he plays against. He'll play against anyone, and he'll, and he'll play as high as anyone will play. So he just he just loves to play poker, and, he, and he's very ni very nice to the game to play with. Um, some people don't like the slow rolls, but I, I think people are get, starting to get used to him now. Whatever, it's all good. It's no big deal. In the scheme of things, really, is it that big a deal? Um, by the way, if you don't play poker. I, I, why are you watching the stream? But no, no. But if you don't play poker, but and you still want to be friends with Deeb, you can always uh, stalk his wife. We can all call. Become, hey, no, like join like a mommy and me, right, right, mommy and me thing with your kid, and like you know, make sure that your kid is friends with his kid. That's pretty That's advanced it. there, Tuck. I don't, I don't know if I, I don't know if I would come up with that one. Game theory optimal <laughs> friendship. Porter with queens. I've stalked many, many people in my life, so I know how to do it. So he's struck 28 asked, uh, does Joe McKeon own other, any other shirts? He didn't wear that yesterday. He owns a lot of other shirts, but they're all raggedy t-shirts. He only wears sweatpants, <laughs> dirty old sneakers, and dirty t uh, raggedy t-shirts. So that's his entire wardrobe. That's what he'll be wearing on the, on the Poker Night in America tables. That's what also he'll be wearing for the uh, main event final table in November. He, uh, I drove him up here from Philly um, three days ago, and we had this discussion. I try to guide him the right way, like a son. He's like a son to me. I try to get, get him dressed up, and you know, just nothing great, but just jeans and a collared shirt, a polo shirt. He just won't do it. It's just not in him. He just wants to be comfortable, and uh, this is how he's comfortable. Hey, in all fairness, that's part of the benefit. I mean. Uh, being a professional poker player has its, his pros and its cons, and there's a lot of difficult things that you deal with. A couple of things that are amazing about being a poker player is number one, generally speaking, you can make your schedule. And number two, generally speaking, you can wear what you want to wear. That's very true. And those are great things. I have all the respect for the world, in the world for a guy like Max Steinberg who wears a tie and looks good, yeah. and, and he wears it well, but he's comfortable in it. And right. I, I, I don't... I don't think it's a smart idea for somebody to be, you know, wear something you're not comfortable in. Especially when you're playing for millions of dollars. we got a pot building here. Yep. Uh, Richard Anthony's getting a little out of line this hand, and we'll see if it 
comes back to haunt him. Yeah, he, hasn't, he hasn't picked up a hand in about an hour. So. I don't think he's going to get to see the flop, but we'll see. No, is going to go with this. Two big hands here. Dentali and D both have ace, king, and ten, so. I mean, how, how, how crazy will Dentali get? I know Dentali is pretty tight. How out of line will he get with ace, king? Will he go all the way with it? The thing is, if he's winning... He's going to just call here and see a flop. If he's losing, if he's buried, he's going to get it in. So I think he's, I think he's winning, actually. Actually, I know he's winning. See, and generally, that's what he's going to be doing. With, with you know, his mood dictates a lot of his play. He's just going to call. Yeah. So if he just called here, I would say he's winning on the day. He's going to win. He's going to call. Deeb's going to come in. And that's going to bring in Hanson as well. By the way, Brian. So the thing is, Deeb might not call here. By the Steve way, our, knows Anthony gets on the line. Our crew member, Brian, who's working on our sound and working on the live stream, almost just flipped the entire <laughs> table <laughs> over been, 60 feet. That would have been amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Except that it would have killed somebody underneath us. Yeah, other than that. But it would have been... A <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was like... I mean, I'm not even kidding. That would have been the worst uh, of the all the screw-ups we've had since day one of Booker. Like, all the sound <laughs> equipment next to us, the monitors, it all was like <laughs> inches away from flipping Sorry, I missed over. missed that. Look at his play. So, D moved all in. So, here's the thing. Now, <laughs> against Sean, Dentali should never be folding. If you saw me play against <laughs> Sean, I would never. I wouldn't even fold Ace Queen in the spot. But because Dentali's winning, he might fold here. But if he was stuck, he would have already called. Let's hear him. Let's hear. Let's hear him fold and bitch. Oh, he calls. I thought Deep doesn't do it more than once. <laughs> Deep slow rolls, slow rolls would be great. I thought Deep didn't do Oh, he showed. He doesn't want to slow roll Mike. It would be too ugly. He thinks Mike might flip the table over and yeah. try to kill yeah, him? Yeah, he, he can't take it. Why? Well, I'm surprised. I thought Deep didn't run it more than once. And frankly, if I think Deep told him. Deep I'm runs it more than once sometimes. He does. I think if Deep told him I'm only running it once, I think Dentali might have Yeah, him. probably. Okay, so if if Dentali loses both, he's runs, gonna lose. If he loses the second he's run, gonna lose. it's all over. Come on, come on, give me a ten. <laughs> ten big, ball, come on. I feel on. bad because I love Dentali. Give me a ten ball. <laughs> It'll be good for the show. One time, ten ball. <laughs> ah, come on. Come on, ten ball. Oh, and he's got like no outs now. He's got one, one out. out. One out. Ten of hearts only. Damn. I'm glad Mike won a hand. I didn't want him to flip. Him. I'm trying to go off the table over. All right, so we're on for the... Yeah, is yeah. everyone a down? See, that's the, I was talking to Torelli about this. I'm curious if your take. I don't run it more than once. Me either. Never. And the reason I don't do it is because I think intimidation and fear is part of the game. And I went through all this and I said, hey, if, let's say Dentali with ace-king here is going to call 80% of the time, but he's only calling 60% of the time right. if he knows I'm running it once. I got more fold equity. Totally agree with you. Yeah. There's a, I have a couple more reasons. Um, one is what you touched on before about protecting yourself. When The more times you run it, the more chances there is for someone to cheat, whether they're in boots with the dealer or That's good point. The, the, uh, the, the pot has to be separated, um, cut in half, and you know, more chance for there to be the mistakes, and I'm getting uh, the worst of it because if I see a mistake, I'm going to let the dealer know or let my opponent know, and if, if it's the other way around, I'm kind of getting free roll because I don't know if they're going to let me know. So just to protect yourself, as you said before, I think it's always great. It's just best to run it once. That's a good point, actually, because there are some casinos that while they allow you to run it more than once, they won't facilitate it. Right, right. And I have seen this happen where a guy says, yeah, run it twice. They run it once. The guy, One guy wins it. And then when the dealer starts to try to run it twice, they go, what are you doing? That's it. We just run it once here. And even if they do facilitate it, when the dealer has to chop the pot, you know, you're at risk that there's going to be a mistake, whether it's off by 100, 1,000, or 10,000. You know, if you don't notice it, you don't know if the other person's going to notice it, and you're, and you're taking the worst of it. It's a good point. It's a good point. My number one reason, like I said, is I, 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 I have just noticed that players are more likely to call and my fold equity goes down a little bit, or even a lot, when they can run it more than once. And you saw tonight uh, the 888 qualifier, Cristiano. Right. He was definitely, once he doubled up, he was scared. Didn't want to lose that money. Lock it up, yeah. And, it's, and by the way, there's not, nothing wrong no, with that. No. I'm not criticizing the guy. But hey, if I can get that guy to fold, if I can get Ace King to fold when I've got tens, that's a huge win for me. For sure. And if you, run it, if you know he's going to run it twice, he might put it in. Yeah. 
that's also my number one reason, what, what you explained. But I was just saying as a side reason, I was commenting on point. what you said about protecting yourself. Yeah. But number one reason is for sure you get more folds by running at once. King high flop, and uh, Anthony's got the best of it right now, it looks like. Yep, he does. Very dry board, king 7-4. Nobody's got much of anything. I'm sorry, McKeon has king-queen. Better kicker here. And this could get Anthony in trouble. He, he's, he doesn't like the fold top pair. Really, seven people to the flop here? Yeah, Hanson's thinking about making a move here with like no equity whatsoever, or maybe we got his cards wrong. I mean, is is the funny thing is the play looks pretty strong when you've got that many people to the flop because the, the board is dry. What's he doing this with? This may not work out. Wow, look at McKeon just folds the top pair. I think it was because there were so many people to the flop, and the board is so dry. Right. Must be like an advanced play from Bart. Yeah, I know. We just put the game on. No, you're right. Yeah. There you go. Crushlivepoker.com right there. You might learn that trick if you watch his videos. Well, I think, you know, it's important. Obviously, Bart understands what his image is. Yeah. He knows how the table, maybe, except for Dee, because Dee and he are friends, sees him. And you look at Bart. Bart, like, kind of he looks like a straight-laced guy. He doesn't look like he makes too many moves. He's quiet. Does that once every two hours. He might, he might just realize that for someone to call there or to continue with that pot, they're going to have to have two pair or better set. And then it's very unlikely someone has two pair on that board, king, seven, four. So for, if, if no one has a set, he's going to win it almost every time. Hey, wait, the best hand somebody has there is King Queen. Can can King Queen really take that much right. heat? I thought about it when he was raising. Like that's what happens. I, I can think when other people are thinking. Like something you'll learn. Ventali is telling the whole table how he knew, because of course he knew. <laughs> after the, hey, but after the He's hands, the king of after, after the hands, hands yeah. are tabled, the dude is the best in the world. <laughs> I, you know what? Why can't I get Tintali up here to do commentary? He'd, he'd be, be great. He, would, he wants to do it. Oh, yes. he'd, uh, he'd be, be gold. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I've had Matisau. I've had JRB. I've had, I can deal with anybody. I think Tintali uh, might be on know, the Bergada uh, fall uh, open commentary for the final table. Yeah, but you I think I saw that on Twitter. Tab yeah. might put him on. He, he well, better. They, he, this is not. I'm not going to just. You want him on in Florida? I'll just put it this way, okay? There's a lot of really, really good commentators out there. If you've got a Dentali in the booth, just make sure you've got a, a tab. Listen, make sure you've got a strong lead because you need to put a leash on the guy. <laughs> That's okay. For sure. You're just saying you need somebody to guide him. He'd be a lot of fun. Big flop here for Deeb as he. Uh, I'm sorry. I thought for a second it was nine, eight, five, two diamonds. Apparently it was just uh, just the one diamond. I think Hanson still has the best hand. Yeah, he does with sixes. I don't think Hanson's folding this so quickly. Instead, the six came. Well, he's gonna make the call. <laughs> the turn was different. Though. It's the six ball. Well, then it was Pass now eighteen fifty. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it was straight down. That was since I sat down today. So, yeah, yeah that was the one up though. Yeah, you mean Andy all got red. Wow, what a river. Yeah, it's a great river for Hobbies for Canuli. <laughs> By the way, I think you got to bet this. That's saying a lot. Because it's a great bluff nine, card, too. It's a card he would use like to bluff. And if you look at Canuli, he just has that bluffy look. So he, he gets, he's going to get paid more often than most people. It, Hansen's hand looks like, like a pair of eights to me. Like if you're sitting at the table, yeah. looks like an eight, something like that. The only problem is that card, like all the Queen 10, Jack 10s got there. Um, that's the point. So if, if Canuli was bluffing with air, let's say Canuli had Ace Queen or right. Ace at, Ace Deuce or something like that, he would use the Jack. Right. Bart knows that. It's a good bluff card. But even if like Bart, Bart could think he would, you know, he would bet there. Jack, he bet into three or four people, so he bet. You could bet Jack 10, Queen 10. All those hands got there, but it's a really tough call for Bart. Yeah, I actually, I, mean, I actually think Bart's gonna lay it down. I think so too, but I just think to balance your range. I generally think balancing in in live poker is overrated. 
But to balance your range, if you're going to use the jack to bluff, yeah, I totally agree with you. Then you got to use it when you hit it. Theoretically, it's correct, but but from Canoli's point of view, when he bet, if he bet Ace Deuce on the turn and Hanson called, Hanson's likely hands jack hits, so it's he's gonna he's gonna give up a lot there, even though he has no equity. Really, I think see, I think Hanson's got a lot of eight, a lot of like eights in his hand, something like that. Yeah, it's, I didn't think he would be able to call there. Oh, I think the folder has to show his hand. Yeah, I thought that would make you think. Oh, okay. Okay. So who would you say, Tucker, the two days now, who are your favorite players when you, we'd want to see back for the next live stream? I think I know I know the top two. Are you talking about just in favorite in terms of like pure entertainment value? Pure entertainment value. Um, I'm trying to figure out if I'm driving or not tonight. Oh. Yeah, that's what I was doing the same thing. I mean Blesnik. Okay. Dentali. Yeah, Ashley's like on the fence whether or not to stay tonight or not. You're forgetting one yeah, key, key guy. I'm sure I'm taking a lot of I'm How just Mike uh, Siegel. Yeah, it's a lot like it's the fish yeah. drive for us. Yeah, Mike Siegel's good, but I mean, I think that Tali, Jared, and yeah, Siegel was great. Siegel's the three, great. The three of them, the three of them together, were just yeah. such a good dynamic. Siegel's funny. He's a funny guy. Um, I throw those three in there, and uh, I mean, Samantha's good too, just because she's funny and stuff, and and I mean, she's uh, she's so much action. Seems like that's the way it goes. Right? Well, she's great for the show just because she's a, a very attractive girl, woman and, and uh, you know, it's just unique to have that. And she mixes it up too, which and is she's, nice. She, yeah, she, she mixes, she played a lot of strange hands. Yeah. So, and she, you know, she's willing to bluff them talent. She's great for the show. And it was for the sole purpose of about playing Lance. But yeah, I, I'd probably go with those three. I mean, Blesnick and Dentali are a great mixture mm. because they. Blesnick plays so many hands and plays them so unconventionally, and he forces a lot of players into really awkward spots. And then Tali is just so loud. Yeah. That. They're both, you know, they're both uh, just very entertaining. So I see some guys on the Twitch stream. One guy did say uh, Rim Dog Poker said Fish Cake, Blesnick, and Tali. That's who I would think would be the, the fan favorites. Um, but you guys definitely type in who you'd like to see next. Uh, in two weeks, uh, there's another show in Florida. So uh, yeah. definitely interested to see who you want to bring back, who's the most entertaining. We, we, are, we know who the better poker players are, and I'm not sure that's really uh, that's not what people want to see, but they really want to see the most entertaining guys. So I mean, I want to see good poker, too. I like to see, like, you know, advanced poker. For sure. It's good to have them mixed in with the entertaining guys. 100%. Is that your new nickname? You know, the best part about this is if you don't win the hand, we get to see what you have anyway. <laughs> I'd like to see you know who I'd like to see who I haven't seen on the show yet. Maybe I ha maybe you were on the show and I missed that one. I I'd, I'd like to see JRB mixed in with Dentali. <laughs> that would be kind of funny. Down, yeah. I'd like to see Mike the Mouth mixed in with Dentali. Uh, you know I like I like to see that. No, those two if those two were heads up in a pot, whoever lost would go insane. Yeah. Oh, so it would be it would be something to see. Like has Helmuth played with Dentali? Yeah. Helmuth has not played with Dentali. Okay. You know, it's not really fair. Right. Oh, yeah. But we could get that arranged at some point. So that would be interesting. Yeah. Really tilting if we check back Colin and he has to show anyway. I think that's fair enough. It's way you different. You, me. It's way different. I was thinking of just. In I think appreciate check tweets check coming in. If you have any questions for me or for Matt, you can send them in through uh, through Twitch, and of course through Twitter at Tuck on Sports. <laughs> Raging Alcohol says he wants to see Phil Locke oh, yeah, and Antonio. We've had them on the show. <laughs> in fact, Antonio was just on the show in Vegas, right? Got a reply from Sean about your idea. What do you say? <laughs> you can read it out loud. I mean, you know, when he over his first card, nah, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you can rehash what your idea was to the Twitch followers. Yeah, they know. So my well, earlier on today, uh, earlier on today, they played uh, one orbit of Hold'em, but the dealer dealt one card to each person face up. So they played an orbit of that. I, I know, and my yeah. suggestion was to add a little bit of flavor to it. I said, I said, why don't we give the players the option to choose which hand is shown, which card is shown. But in addition, I said each player should get three cards. Pitch one, basically muck one, show one, and keep one face down. And uh, the team's response, nah, that's stupid. <laughs> he says it straight up. So Jimmy Buffett asked, Blake Bond is going to be on oh, correct on, in Florida, and he, yeah, he is going to be on in Florida. Who's the Minnesota guy? Um, is he going to be on in Canterbury as well? Blake Bond is he? From, I, he's from Minnesota. I think he's a Minnesota okay. boy. He was deep in the main event with these guys too. I think yeah. he busted probably in the top thirty or something. 
and then he won another tournament last uh, Blake's a good last player, couple yeah. of weeks. Yeah. Ace Jack eight. Porter's gonna bet. McKeon's got a pair of jacks. I imagine if they call this at least once. You see how a rep bets so fast there when the flop when he got checked on. That's uh, it's not a good sign usually. But now he's gonna have to have to check back for sure when he hit a pair. Oh my God, rep, don't do it. Well, rep does this a little bit. We saw this yesterday. He he bets in some un in weird spots. Yeah, most players would check back there when they hit a pair. I think I'm gonna go now have some equity. Yeah, I mean he still beats nine ten. Um. Not a ton of hands that he can get. Queen 10 is double gutted, but that got there. Yeah, I don't, so, like, I don't like that bet on the turn at all. He plays that kind of weird style, though. He'll check back the river if it's checked to him. I don't think he'll bluff one more time. Well, now, he, now he has no equity, so he might have to bet here. His hand turned into mush on the river. Well, he had no, he had no he equity. Be, he beats he, nothing. He had no equity on the, on the turn. What's he beating on the turn? When he gets called. So if... If I were to like to see the rep check back the turn and bet the river of check to him, be based on this. So he actually had some equity on the turn. Uh, I think and if you're going to bet the turn, you got to bet the river too. Yeah, for sure. Well, th that, I mean, river, that river specifically. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But it's, I mean, when he bets the turn, he gets called. What is he beating? <laughs> when he's, be he's being 9 10. Specifically. Yeah, king. I mean, not, there's not many too, too many hands. That's why I don't, like, I don't really like his bet on the turn. Right. Uh, Canuli, by the way, came in for 20,000, so he's up 13. Torelli, by the way, came in for 13. He's up 10. Wow, I thought he had a lot more. When did he lose that? Did he lose a huge pot that we didn't see? Who's that? Torelli? Did he lose $10,000 somewhere? I think he lost a bunch in that one card game. Oh, he did lose. He lost the, the queen ten of spades to the kings. He lost a little bit. Yeah, queen nine Maybe to the set of fours. Yeah, queen nine to the set of fours. Yeah, that one card game wasn't wasn't friendly to him. So he's up ten. Hansen's up about five thousand now. Speaking of Torelli, he picks up kings. I think these players are playing for another hour. Is that right? What time is it? Seven forty-five. Yeah, probably about another hour. Yeah, put it there. It's up for me, but it's like, it's fair. It's for you, too. No, I'm okay. Well, one, two. This is what I should have went over. Oh, he did lose, uh, thank you, Ariel. It's just got to be the worst seat in the history of seats. I can't. What does it say? Ariel, he... <laughs> I can't read it. Either. Something... Uh, Ariel... He won his Hell nose. Hell, won his nose. <laughs> I don't anyway, he, anyway he, uh, thank you for the for the Twitch, uh, he, the Twitch comment. He said he lost with the aces to uh, McKeon's flush. That was where he lost the money. Thank you very much. So this is raised and called in 19 spots. Deeb is three betting, and Trelli's not gonna have any of that. He's gonna four bet. Or did he just call? <laughs> no, he re-raised. So you get a raise here. Call in like four spots. Everyone folded. I was in the fold. Three bet from Deeb. I don't think Deeb's getting off this so easy. My cards. No, you're not three betting with. I mean, he's he, he's at the top of his range here. I mean. And Deeb has the button. Yeah, all in the call. Is that a call? <laughs> yeah, that's a call. Is that a call? He says. <laughs> what do you want to do? I mean, when Deeb squeezes there, I think tens are one of the best hands he has. If he's folding that, it's a really tough thing. Yeah. I don't. I just didn't think he was getting off. He was. He doesn't. He's not a much of a folder in those spots. He picks up some outs here. Six cards. Ten or a jack. I can promise you, does not have the ten hearts. No. Don't you breathe, Deeb? Looks like they're gonna run it a second time. Two, two, four. That's the other thing why I don't like running it twice. Like, there's, there's a lot of times it's a chop pot. There's no pain. Yeah. When, when pain's you, good. When somebody wins and somebody loses a lot, the game usually gets a lot better. Yeah. I'm with you. No, Deeb's gonna lose both. Deep draw him dead. <laughs> so Deep's going to be stuck like 20,000 now at least. Did you see what yeah, that was an interesting hand because you start thinking about it. You go, when you get a raise and a call in three spots, Deep is three betting and squeezing with a lot of hands. So when he squeezes in three bets with the top of his range, right? Yeah, it's very, very difficult for him to fold that. Oh, yeah, just give me the difference and keep whatever 10 is. 
I just keep this on the I mean, table. He's not three bagging the fold, yeah, and, like, and, and, and he knows Alex has some stack game stack in him, so Alex yeah, doesn't yeah. always have to have it. Right, no, I mean, I. I Alex has ace king enough or ace queen, and sometimes he has, so you, you know, an air ball. Yeah. So. Okay, and then you put that out. Yeah. Yeah, okay, got it. There was just a lot of dead money in the pot. A lot of guys called the raise. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, just, just, just yeah, deep could be three betting there with ace three. A lot of things were just yeah. like right away. Well, that's how you said. Like deep's just not gonna get off it so easy. So, yeah. it, but he could have called. I mean, he. I don't know how much he had behind him at the time, but he could have called another seventeen hundred. Right. To try to flop a set or see what the flop looks like. Deep in front of the fifteen thousand now, so he's thirty-five k in now. A lot of money on the table now. Trelli uh, no, now at 20. Yeah, yeah, I want to say Trelli's like, probably up like. Yeah, I thought you had it. Yeah. Yeah. Trelli's probably up like 25,000. Yeah, he's up a lot, which is no surprise. Like I said, he, he has a big advantage. He watched the, he commentated the stream all day yesterday. He knows the player tendencies, and he's a great player. He's a freaking set magnet too. Yeah, he's in running. He's, run, he's running amazing. So, all all good things positive yeah. going in his direction. That's great. But look, if he had, if he didn't if he didn't do the live stream yesterday. And we play, and this game played for you know three weeks straight every day. He's going to win anyway, so he's a favorite in the game. Right, I love the fact running better than normal. So he does commentary with me yesterday. Neither one of us make many money today. I do commentary. He gets and he makes twenty five k. We knew we knew you won us all. Really good, right? McKeon flops the stones. Man, he and Anthony's going to try to try to make the second best dance. Yeah, well, Anthony, and this is one of those spots where you just got to realize, okay, you're, you're open ended with nine eight, but the queen is not a good card right, for you. The queen is terrible. <laughs> so, and plus, there's two diamonds out there. So, the seven of diamonds isn't yeah, even a great card. Oh, and I do when I go to meatball shop. Yeah. Give me the veggie. Give me the veggie. Oh, if a seven comes off, we're just in. How's this got play? Meatball shop. Yeah, in Manhattan. Anthony might be getting a little bit uh, bored of folding. Yeah, that's kind of a, mis a big mistake, just because, like you well, said, if the queen pulls <laughs> off, he's <laughs> never going to put another chip in the pot, you know, it, unless he's, it's just a hopeless call if he does. So he's really only looking for one card, and it, he just happened to be drawing dead as it is. There's one in Brooklyn and Williamsburg. And there's one in Aspen. Williamsburg right on, like, 7th. They the same one in Aspen. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know they did. They went that big. Yeah. Those guys are crushing it. They're crushing it. McKeon picks up 975, and he just continues to win. McKeon, by the way, is up 17,000. Torelli's up 25,000. Canuli's up 12. It's really good. Honestly, if you were to look at this table and you go, okay, who are the most experienced no-limit hold'em specialists? Um, basically, the top four players probably play the most. I mean, with all due respect to you, and you're, you're a mixed game guy. You know yeah, that. You say that for sure. The four guys that are on the top of this leaderboard, and, and anything can happen in one day. Obviously, small sample size, but the four guys on top are the guys who play the most no-limit hold'em. For sure, and the one amateur is losing the most. Right. It's like an 80k jump, right? It's impossible. Like an Deep doesn't even play that much No Limit Hold'em. Yeah. No. I think outside of Poker Night in America, but he, he doesn't probably play at all. But he used to play a lot online. Yes. He has a lot of more experience. That's what I mean. That's what I'm saying. But even then, he played mostly tournaments. This is a guy, he, he's played more tournaments back in like 07, 08, 09. He probably yeah. played more tournaments than anybody in the world. Deep's the, Deep's the most creative player. He's the most experienced player. He's probably played the most number of hands. But he's also the, the player that gets out of the line the most, which gets him in trouble. So, um, you know, he's really, really tough to play against. But he has. He has some big losing sessions now and then, too, because he just gets out of line a little too much. Well, he's such a thinking player here. Yeah, for sure. I'm just, I guess my only, I, I'm just curious how, how much No Limit Cash he plays. Rarely ever plays No Limit Cash, but online he, he used to play a lot of a lot of No Limit tournaments. Both players are very happy to get the show down if they somehow can, and Charlie's going to win this with a pair of sevens. Maybe unless, unless I have plans for you. Well, even if, it's like, <laughs> at the very beginning, like, before it starts, you might be in, like, the, like your stack and, like, the way So it's 80K and then 140? Like, your spot it's like something really small. Is not, like, I'll probably know it by I mean, it's, it's got a lot, of, a lot of people commenting on the graphics and stuff, and uh, we appreciate that you, uh, you're you enjoying them. I can tell you our crew is doing a great job. Exactly. They, they are constantly working on, on ways to enhance the graphics package. Right now, the setup is specifically for tournaments. But as we move forward in live stream cash games, I'm sure that uh, more and more uh, nuances will be, joy will be uh, brought in there, such as position and, and other things. Just from yesterday today, that nice overhead where you guys put the, the, the names in. 
kind of a nice touch. You should hire a coach. <laughs> yeah, you should absolutely. Oh my god, I don't have any coaches. I don't do the coaching. Thing. It's it's no, it's not like your rail is just do. every single person. Person. I, I don't do the coaching. You know, I talked to uh, you, you and I were referencing my podcast earlier on. You know, I, ta I interviewed Jesse Sylvia last week. That well, that one probably was really really yeah it was interesting but uh, one of the things we I, I, I tried to focus on his November 9 experience yeah and the coaching he received from Vanessa uh, Vanessa self I mean, he was already a great player before that but I'm sure Vanessa made him see things he's never saw before and he told me he uh, he told me you know he didn't really know her they didn't know of each other and he approached her and she said she'd love to and then he ended up going to Vegas and staying with her and they basically I, I, woke up in the I, morning, watched poker on TV and old hands and everything. Yeah. And all they did was just talk poker for weeks on it, uh, for really? like two weeks. And uh, he said it was invaluable having her in, in his corner. She's one of the smartest people in poker. So she's one of the, the best minds. And there's no doubt that, that she would be helpful to anyone. <laughs> You know, if, if I was a November Niner, I would get coaching from someone like her, a receiver, or Timex, one of those one of those guys. And Who would you hire? I'm curious. And uh, I think probably Timex, receiver, would be my top guys. And I would even hire him so much just for the final table. But just to know that getting all that in, that information and, and seeing things that you've never saw before, thinking about things you've never thought about before, is going to make you so much a better player for after the final table, just for going forward. It's not even just helpful for that one that one event. I mean, think how much of a better player um, Jesse is even after his final table. He has, he has that experience. Your high school basketball game or something, exactly. whatever. Ring dog says Parks just clicking buttons. It's funny, but I disagree with you. He's very uh, methodical and he knows what he's doing. And um, he has that look. He has that crazy look. Like he, like he looks at his cars with a disgusted look sometimes. Like, and it's kind of his thing, but. Trust me, he's calculated. He knows what he's doing. Rim dog poker is is, is trolling, by the way. Oh, okay. that's 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 okay. one of Bart's good friends. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a guy. He's, he weighs 484 pounds, and he lives in he lives in Rochester. Yeah, yeah. Just that, that hell hole of the world. So Galto 21 wants to know how much these guys get for coaching in the final table of the World Series. Um, everyone's all the deals are different, but basically it's just a percentage of the winnings. They all the guys at the final table already received a million. So if somebody's coaching uh, someone at the final table, usually they're going to get a percentage of what they win over that million. So, you know, small, like 1%, 2%, maybe 3%. Um, but, you know, it's a lot of money if someone hits big. Yeah, Life Grind says Selfs is overrated. Most pros don't rate her. Uh, I can tell you that is wholeheartedly untrue. Um, I talk to a lot of the top pros in the world. And for the most part, uh, from what I've heard, most rate her very highly. She's actually really, really good for a girl, actually. Vanessa, so. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Vanessa. You know, she's really one of the top minds in poker. Girl, guy, whatever. She's, she's fantastic at, <laughs> she's one of the best. at understanding how people view her and how they, how they adjust, and then she adjusts accordingly. Yeah, she's, she's so, she's just so, such at a higher level than everyone else. And uh, she's always impressed me. And uh, you know, there's there's really there's really not much you can say bad about the way she thinks about the game. Can teach tournaments better if they've done it before. Someone who's a great player that isn't necessarily a good coach. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, so that podcast is available at CrushLivePoker.com. It's free. The one with Jesse Sylvia, and he addresses that. He actually said what he and Vanessa did was uh, they figured out what the rate was. His her rate. They figured out how many hours they were going to work together over like you know a few weeks. And they basically worked that into a percentage, where she got a, you know, whatever it was, half a percent or something like that, or whatever it might have been. And he said she actually got overpaid because she got paid more because his equity at the final table was like, you know, 2.7 million right. or something like that, or 3.1 million, and he ended up winning 5 million. So, uh... So going into this main event final table, Joe McKeon's the big chip leader, has got 35% of the chips. And his uh, his ICM or his value going in is somewhere around 4.7 million, which is a little slightly over second place money. And someone like Thomas Canoli in the four seat, who is uh, sixth in chips, but he only has 12 million in chips, a uh, pretty small percentage. His value is around 2.4 million. So um, even though Joe has way way more chips i think four or five times more chips than only 
his ICM is only he's only worth twice as much as someone in sixth place like Cannoli. I think this year is interesting. McKeon picks up Ace King for like the seventeenth time today. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's just unreal. <laughs> Not to mention all the other big pairs he picked up. Oh, it's it's just unreal. He's, and then when he doesn't yeah. pick up big pairs, he just cracks them. Joe's a little disgusting. He's really a bit disgusting lately. But you know what? It's hard. To, it's hard to dislike Joe. So. No, he's a great guy. I like him a lot. Uh, <laughs> Torelli makes the call. Yeah, he got it in with me. Ace ten versus sevens, and no no problem there today. <laughs> He hasn't lost well, a flip like that. It's not a flip. It's like Jason Mercier like, like four yeah. years ago. All right. And, 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 and there Alex, you go. Alex oh, in trouble here. Yeah. What, <laughs> can you get a better flop for these two matches, these two hands? <laughs> uncomfortable in all these situations that he will make correct decisions you might not also make. Right. You put yourself in spots where you're not used to. Yeah, a lot of people get really unlucky here and hit a six on the turn, so they have to chop. But not. I don't think Joe's going to Well, if it does, it'll come six king. Yeah, right. More help understanding some of the intricacies. Yeah. Or different parts of the game that you don't necessarily understand. You should have your math coach and your, like, play coach. It's yeah. totally different. Now, this year, November 9, is going to be very interesting. I want to get to that in a second after this hand. Heads up pro calling for a jack. Come on, jack, one time. No way against McKeon. You know, medium weak hands yeah. that in the past he would have like made the other guy decide. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he's medium weak and they're medium and he loses a bunch of pots in a row. And, and that, that's the limit back on <laughs> getting that thin value over hand. Right, but that's one of his huge strengths. Yeah, so now how he's shocked would we be if a jack put off in the river? You know, like it's not I don't even think Joe wouldn't even know what just would happen if something like that happened to him. Well, that doesn't happen. I was gonna say it's not even gonna be it's not even gonna be like a queen or a ten that might kill his action a little. It's a blank basically. It just always goes back call here or check back call. There's always one bet on the river here, but Joe can either decide to check and get, try to get value, or uh, he can bet and get value. Either way. I like betting. I mean, I really like just betting here. And I don't see how I, mean, I don't see how Alex ever folding here. I mean, he's not beating much. It's just one of those spots where he's just, he's just not going to be folding too much. No, I don't think so either. But it's just, I mean, he's beating ace-10, he's beating ace-8. It's like, it's like he's going to say in his mind, if I'm not calling here, what am I calling the turn right, for? Right. So exactly. I have to call, even though it sucks. And, and Joe didn't even bet that much. So he's like pricing him into a half, half the call. Yeah, he bets 2,100 into 2,800. Red Sox Net says, "Don't be bashful, Matt. Joe is a lot disgusting." Yeah, I have to agree with you, buddy. He is uh, he is pretty disgusting lately. I mean, if you have a hand like Ace Five here, I do think you can find a fold. I mean, there's not that many hands between Ace Jack and Ace Five, though. There's two. But there's there's also there's but there's only two hands between it, right? But at ace least with, with ace, ace five, there's no value hand that Look at McKeon Alec has. making the hero fold. Wow! Yeah, nice how good is Alec playing? That's a sick laydown. That is really sick. That's that, really that's laydown. actually. Well, how bad does Joe run that he doesn't get paid off? <laughs> you can do it all you want. Wow. You only get two streets there. Very, I'm very impressed with Alec. The hero fold there. Yeah, but that was first. Um, ace, I mean, ace five and ace jack, I think, are significantly different because you could you could come up with a, a a couple of hands that McKeon can have there yeah. that he'd be value betting that are worse than ace jack. There's no value hand worse than ace five. Right, right. Is my is my point. Um, so November nine, I think this is an interesting year because in years past, the ICM considerations, the huge pay jumps, the huge stage that is the main event November nine. You get a lot of tight play, and I think obviously it affects the game. And it, you know, some players go in there somewhat tight. Some players go in there to like climb the pay ladder. This year, this since all nine players are guaranteed a million dollars, and the pay jumps between nine and eight and eight and seven aren't that huge. I wonder if that is going almost zero between nine yeah, and seven. I wonder if that's going to strongly affect play. Going in, are the short stacks going to be more apt to gamble early it's, it's on? It's actually, I mean, it's going to strongly affect play versus what you normally see in tournaments. But it's going to, but the way the payouts are, it's going to strongly not affect play in this specific tournament because, because there's no pay jump. So it should play, it should play the first nine when, until there's uh, seven or six left. It should play like there's you know 40 players left in the tournament. It should play, so there's also just going to be no effect. They took that out because they wanted the big pay jumps. Um, from 13 down to 10 because they wanted to get the final table all paid to a million. It might make the viewing experience of the November 9 actually more entertaining. 
right now. Yeah, because everyone can gamble. And Joe, like if, a, if it was a normal pay jump scale, Joe can really run over the table right from the start. Yeah. But he really can't be doing that with the payout structure it is until there's only six left at this time because the jumps are so small. The jump from ninth to eighth, I think, is 90,000. And when you're, when you're already guaranteed a million, 90,000 is very much when you're playing for 7.7 .7 million. I can buy that. I don't know. It's the six. It's the card to the left. No, no, I think it's seven. That's why you were in such a hurry to say it's six. <laughs> I said this is a tip pot before the final. That's a good lay down by Alex Torelli. It really is. Seven. I was pretty sure the dark card hit last Thank you. Dude, he had to pay. I mean, he said it. He said it to the I mean, how many players no. flop trips no. with trip with no. ace jack? <laughs> And the, the board run out is ace, 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 ace six, nine, seven. They pay two streets and they fold. I really think that uh, Alec must have picked something up on the live stream yesterday on, on Joe and just saw it and then just saw the same thing today. And really was able to make that hero fold. And it's really impressive by Alec. He picked something up and he just, he just knew. He, I mean, he just doesn't want to fold there, but he feels like it's the right play. I got to tell you, if I was, if I was a November Niner, I might give Alec Torelli a call and be like, hey, that's true. <laughs> Let me tell me about Joe. Hey, you commentated on him for eight hours and you played with him for another five hours. Very good point. And the guy with that hand was good, too. I mean, Torelli does offer coaching. That was the whole right? cool story about he like does. Nice he has his own site. Props. See, it says it right there. Four, like four step poker dot com. Right on his sleeve. He needs, he needs a name. To fold quickly, Terrible name. To Might be a great company. I have to agree with you. That, the like name's not good, but I'm sure the site's very good. Um, but yeah, I mean, hey. He might not be a marketing genius, but he's a good coach. Right. He knows his poker. Dale Boone saying, where's Mike Dantelli? He's still there. He's just been quiet. I know it's kind of out of, out of the ordinary for him. He might be in lockdown now after he just skated with the 10s versus Ace King where he, he ran it twice and the first time he lost, he yeah. just he just saw all his chips flying away if he didn't win the uh, second run. And Tali's a team player. He's wearing the Pepper Poker Night in America yeah. hat today. I, I, st I still don't have a Poker Night in America hat. I don't have a Poker Night in America <laughs> shirt. More importantly, yeah. I don't have a giant sunflower hat or a giant sunflower t-shirt, which is what I really want. Yeah, I guess that one's 11. Somebody from that sunflower company, contact us, please. And the whole table bet on him? I'm a big t-shirt guy and a hat guy. Look at that logo for the giant sunflowers. It's pretty, pretty awesome. sweet, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Juan was running and winning and winning for a long time. <laughs> I don't know if he was laying quite that. I thought it was like 4 or 5%. He might have ended up playing 11 10 Matt, four, thank you for joining me in the booth. I want to thank Alec Torelli for joining us yesterday. Yeah, We're going, back at it tomorrow at 12.30 for the final off, table so right, of the right, Empire right, State right. Championship. i got to tell you, I think yeah. you and, and Torelli together are, are just perfect. You guys complement each other really well. He's a lot of fun to work with him. It's like the TNT broadcast. He was a, he's, he's good to and with. Torelli. <laughs> <laughs> I like to see more of that because I, I watched a little bit last night after we were done, and uh, you guys are very informative and very very well. It's a very good combination. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Uh, diamonds are cheap. I want to thank uh, Joe Stapleton, Stapes, for coming in as well. He's still here. I'm gonna he, he and Todd Anderson are walking around holding hands. I'm going to bet nobody, like a makes a, nobody makes a flush this hand. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen I've seen flush over flush over flush once in my life in commentary, and I've probably commentated on like thirty thousand hands. <laughs> and not here, but how about a set of sevens? Well, he's not going to make that much on this uh, board. I don't think anybody else. Oh well, actually, Rep's not going to be folding for flop. Now McKean's got jacks too. I don't know. If he's not going to go further than the turn, Jet, especially with Rep in the pot. Yeah. Yeah, Rep's actually got a lot of equity here. I mean, he thinks he's got backdoor diamond draw. Yeah. Little does he know all the diamonds are dead. And obviously, he's, he's open-ended here, looking for a three or an eight. But Rep Deep has flopped a number of sets today. Just hasn't really worked out for him. He hasn't gotten paid yeah. off that much. Well, the four has worked out when he, against queen nine. But that was the only one I remember. But even that hand, it might have gotten a lot. It's unfortunate that that hand happened during right. the, one the one card up. Card, yep. Because in an open that, hit, that might have, yeah, who knows how, how big that pop might have gotten. Yeah, there's no way Steve would just call here. He has to raise. 
It's kind of a drawy board with all those people in it. Well, and you know what? But Rep is not a full. He rate, but Sean raised a lot. Deeb is, uh, you know, he's down a lot of money today. He likes to gamble, as you mentioned. Yeah. You said you even mentioned sometimes he pushes a little bit too much. Yep. I don't see Rep get it. Rep does not fold, and uh, you know he's going to want to snap one off here on the turn, or he's going to he's going to be done on the turn. Most if likely. a diamond to three or an eight come off, it could get real ugly on the turn. Oh, oh it is a three of clubs now. <laughs> it is a three of clubs, and that might slow both players down just a little bit. And the thing is, those cards are pretty live for to fill up on the river. Was, we saw a lot of cards pre-flop. I think we only saw one four. No queens, no and threes. No queens and no threes. So those he's so Sean is pretty live. But the flush, the flush is going to slow them down, though. Well, I mean, you know, when Deeb is raising, a lot of what he's raising with are flush draws, isn't right. it? Yeah, it would be better if it was a three of spades on the turn. For oh, sure, well, for action. Well, he's not folding. No, Rep's not folding this. <laughs> There's no way Rep's folding this. Well, that's, a, that's a great shove by really? Sean. He knows he's going to get stacked anyway with the flush. So maybe he gets the one hand that, it, that one beats choice. him to fold the straight. I just don't think any, I don't think any hand is, I don't think any hand better than a pair of sevens is folding. Okay. Ever. Rep wins the first one. And, and they chop pair. it up. Yeah, and they pair. They chop it up there. No, I like that shove by Do you? Sean. Cause Tell me gonna, why. He's going to get stacked anyway with a, with a, if Rep has many flush. Is he, what's There's he getting, only 8,000 left. What's he getting value from, though? He is getting, well, no, I'm saying he's getting one hand to fold better than him sometimes, a, a straight. He's never getting a straight to fold. You know, it's not an easy call there when it looks like easily Deeb could have a flush. But you're telling me Deeb's, Deeb's going to move all in when the flush card comes? He's tricky like that. He would sometimes. And some people would fold, but Rep, Rep is not a folder. But Rep could fold there. I just don't buy. I mean, hey, I mean, you know Deeb better than me. I just don't buy. Deeb is, I don't buy Deeb moving all in for $12,000 into like a $7,000 pot. No, he, when moved, he, makes in, the he flush. moved in for 8000 It was 8000 effective. So it was basically pot bet. Pop bet, okay. Yeah, so really it's well. possibly gets one, and if he's going to lose it all anyway, when when the guy has a flush, he's really he's not he's not betting to get um, called by worse. He's betting to get one hand bet, better than the fold. So he's turning a set and, into and a bluff. It was, and it's funny that so he's turning the, a set into a bluff. Mm, he's pretty much, but the thing is, Rep actually had that one hand that that had him beat that could fold. And that's, he called. That's the sick part, right? But he yeah. thought about it. Yeah, I, I just don't think I. I I don't think he's ever folding. You said that was the, your first instinct. He's not folding this. <laughs> well, rep is not a folder. Well, I mean, Deeb knows that. <laughs> yeah. I just, I mean, you're playing against the player, so if Rep's never folding a straight, he's never folding a flush, he's never folding top set. No, it's definitely. No, he's not folding. He's more likely to fold a straight than top set. Because at right. least top set, he knows he's got out. He could improve, yeah, right. Yeah. It's not the turn cut I was looking for. Yeah. <laughs> a club straight cut. And I'll talk to Deeb about that one. I always ask Deeb about his hands, and I'm always I'm curious, because I, I don't I don't know if I like that shove. I'm gonna play devil's yeah. advocate here. I just don't know. I mean, it's an awful card, obviously. Sarah, you're back. Did you drink your whole bottle on your break? Be pretty sick though if you got in the fold of straight. Don't you think? What's that? So pretty sick if you got him yeah. to fold the straight. The thing, I mean, it's like, it's he just has a pot size bet, so he's like hoping to get called by worse. Where like, maybe rep, rep can have ace queen with the ace of clubs, something like that. Yeah. I, I thought I thought maybe it was. Uh, I, I actually miss. I I thought for a second it was an overshove. I thought he, I thought it was like one and a half x pot, but if it was only a pot size shove. I think it was exactly pot. Yeah. That guy. Looks like Santa. Ryder back says, I hope <laughs> Mac Lance makes the final eight of Mars. We don't hear him commentate. I hope so too, but I'm out of the tournament, buddy. But I can tell you, commentating is not my uh, my thing. I'm trying to do the best I can. I'll continue to try to do the best, but I'm, I'm more of a player, less of a commentator. So. Dude, what's up with the hate? Come on, guys. <laughs> no, I don't mind. I agree with him. I wish it was uh, Alec up here with Tucker. Dude, Those guys are great, great. You do a great Those job. Those guys are don't fantastic. Listen don't listen to him. 
I mean, that's the kind of that's the beauty of the of poker commentary. I I've worked with so many different people and to get different perspectives from everybody else. Yeah. It's. I mean, if there's only if, if you only get somebody up here you agree with. It just doesn't, you know. By the way, I don't even care what Dentali has. I love the fact that Hansen is putting pressure on him. Dentali doesn't really want to get mixed up. Okay. Although he looks like he's going to check raise this. We can see he can't really have a big hand. Now he's count. Is he counting out like how much he has profit? <laughs> and then he's going to fold. <laughs> it's very possible. I've seen I think, guys he's, do I think, he's, I think he's bluffing. Like he's bluffing that he's not going to do oh it. My yeah. God. Honestly, there's nothing more tilting to me. I love that. He does that all the time. I'm, I'm sorry. It's a play that I learned yeah. in like 19, right, right. 1986. Exactly. The guy who like counts out his entire stack, acts like he's going to move all in, and goes, "Oh, I fold." When 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 Vitaly's in a pot, heads up, he can never just fold. He always has annex. If he has to fold, he has to do something before folding. Fake raise, fake call, or something. He just never wants to fold right away. Dentali, by the way, up seven thousand dollars. So, and, and yesterday, by the way, he was up. He was up fourteen yesterday. Finished the day down forty five hundred. Today he's up seven. So, I know he wants to book this win. Hold on, I should want some hands now. New rule, guys, in the tip pot, if a six comes, no matter what, the six pays. Sound good? I'm okay. You can disagree. Anyone? Kyler or food by chance? Yeah, I just want to order it to go because I'm driving. Blazing 66 says, is Poker Night in America coming back to Pittsburgh anytime soon? Schedule is not released yet. We know the next two uh, the next two stops are uh, Florida, which is coming up very shortly. And then, of course, after that, Canterbury, which is in Minnesota. But uh, if you go to the Poker Night website, you will uh, be able to follow throughout the year. You can also follow them on Twitter, and they'll let you know, of course. But Pittsburgh was uh, the last two end of November, the last two years, so... You could safely assume it's likely going to be there again the same and time. From what I hear about Rivers Casino, yeah, people love it, right? It's a great place. Yeah. Great poker room. So well built. So I've heard people love it there. So I imagine, yeah, I mean, Mike, I'd be surprised if you know, Rivers Casino didn't happen again. Uh, obviously, I, I would assume that, uh, is it, uh, what's it, Sugar Bush? Sugar House. Sugar House. I would assume that's probably going to happen. Yeah. Maybe. Mm, they were just there recently. Were they? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, you could get obviously. from Whole Foods. The yeah. Rivers Casino in yeah. Pittsburgh is kind of cool because it's right next to Steeler Stadium and and the Pirates Stadium. It's like all right there, so it's kind of like Ooh, a, nice. a cool, interesting area. Yeah, those are kind of, it's kind of historic. Places. I might travel in for that one. Just cause I, I'd like to go see uh, I'd like to go see a Steelers game. There's a lot of yellow and black when you're driving in over there. It's pretty cool. I'd like to go see a Steelers game. I'd be fun. Yeah, <laughs> I've never been. I've been to uh, I've been to like 17 of the NFL stadiums, and I've never been to Pittsburgh though. Kind of excited this year. I'm going to uh, <laughs> he likes sugar going to Dallas for the first time. What do you say? Red Sox and Nets. He's a guy from Philly. He likes it sugar like bush better. Lot, he plays at parks and sugar house. Looks in like you don't eat a lot as well. He likes so. your <laughs> sugar bush. <laughs> I think it should be called Sugar Bush. Eating a lot, not Better. Eating a lot, yeah, I'm not sure why it's called Sugar House. <laughs> Torelli in the straddle with Ace Jack, Cannuli with uh, two Jacks. He raises under the gun here. He ordered like two appetizers. That's what I would do. I just feel so How different is the game, not just because it's bigger, but how different is the game with three blinds? Um, the game, it's, you know, it's not that much different except that it's harder to call out of the small blind. Yeah, from from a single raise or even even just a limp. So you get, it's it's really just it turns the big blind into the small blind and the, and the straddle into the big blind, in my opinion. And the small blind just like almost never playable. Yeah. I mean, I hate playing small blinds anyway. Yeah, it's just a tough spot. Your first act after uh, you know post flop, mm -hmm. you don't close the action. That makes a lot of sense. And I like what my, my name is. My name Aunt Earl says they should hold it at Plymouth White Marsh High School. Because if they did that, I could walk to it because that's my backyard. <laughs> he obviously knows that, but that would be a great place to hold it. Hold it. Plymouth White Marsh High School. <laughs> my backyard borders on the uh, the, the cross field. Last I heard, you were relatively fit. Yeah, I mean, is this the school your children will go to? Yeah, they're in the middle school and elementary school now, but they'll eventually go to that school. Yeah, 50 push-ups, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> like the team. Like that's the key. Twenty five. Really tired. Eating, eating good is the key, though. Know? Yeah. No matter how much. Yeah. You if I ate like you, I would really look good. Thanks. We eat meatballs. No, but I only eat when I'm away. When it looks I'm like they're away, ordering dinner now. Very good. A lot of good food here at Turning Stone. I'm pretty impressed with the restaurants. You gotta have some balance. I, like I said, I'm blown away by what 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 has happened to this place since I came here. Yeah, and the staff was amazing. Frank, the poker manager, was amazing to all the all the crew and the and the players in the poker night in America. It was really, really hospitable. I like the Upstate hospital. Grill too. Like nice little bar. Good order. The, the steakhouse? No, not the steakhouse, but the bar right around the corner. I haven't been to that one, but the steakhouse is phenomenal. Oh, fantastic. Order like cheap days or cheap meals and stuff. Otherwise, it's not. I'll eat like a carton of ice, like some type of ice. Just a reminder, we are back tomorrow, 12.30 p.m. Eastern for the tournament. No, my wife and I will split like a pint. Poker night in America. I don't think of those little things as cartons. I mean, like these are serving. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's a small ice cream cone. Is he talking about like a pint? We do get the cocoa. Was there a point in your poker career where you had like an epiphany where you were like, Either A, you figured out you could do this, or B, like there was something that just clicked. Shoes, give it away. <laughs> mm, I don't know if there was one point. I think it's always been a, grow, a growing experience mentally for me. Um, just like learning the games and learning what other people are thinking really. Is, wow. And I'm still learning. So it's like I've been playing for 14 years. I really, before that, I really never played poker in my life when I was a kid or growing up. Poker just wasn't a game. We played Risk. We played Monopoly growing up. Dude, Never I love poker. Risk. Risk is one of my yeah. favorite games in the world. But uh, just throughout me playing poker over the last 14 years, I just feel like I keep keep improving, keep getting better. And, uh, you know, I put time into it, not as much as I used to. I'm a little older now. And, uh, you know, if I was a single kid in my 20s still playing po and playing poker for a living and planning on po playing for a while, I would be putting in a lot of time every day. You can always learn, no matter how good you get. I was good at swimming. That requires a certain level. Not of even a doubt. Pentali uh, bets the 400 with the with uh, with the Broadway draw. Anthony's got an interesting draw as well. Same draw, but he's got the ace of spades. So might be able to rep that if a spade comes off. It's funny. There's some funny comments in the chat now. So my name, Anna Earl, says I'm pretty sure Glance is troll proof. It's, yeah, you guys could say anything you want. I got pretty thick skin, and, and uh, I dish it out, so you guys, I could take it. So just lay it out on the line. I don't, I don't mind. Um, Jamie Staples belly buttons asked if I ever played with Nicky Francos, also known as Fat Nicky. Yes, I played with him dozens and dozens of times. Very, very good player, especially in the stud games. Top stud player. Red Sox, Red Sox Net says Joe is a Risk World Champion. <laughs> no, Joe McKean is. He won the World Championship in Risk about five years ago. That's a true story. There's a World Championship of Risk. Yeah, that's you could look it up or Google it right now. By the way, if you're Anthony, it's fun. I mean, it's sort of like a game. You got the Ace of Spades. I mean, I think Dentale is just going to call this. Yeah. But, uh, he's not raising. He's the well, kind there's of. There's no point raising. No, no, none at all. He's going to Hollywood a little bit before calling. He loves it. He can't just call. He can never just call or fold. He has to do stuff. It's Annex, but. It's, <laughs> it's like they built headphones for him. You know, a lot of people do this because they, they want to. They know they're going to call, but if they wait a long time and take a long time to call, at least they look smart if they call and they lose. Like, at least I was thinking about folding or something You know something what? Like you know that's, what? This just in. Mentality. This just in. Dentali doesn't look smart. Sorry. I can't wait to, to, till uh, Dentali listens to this broadcast. He <laughs> calls me up. He's going to be yelling at me. Why did you defend me? Why did you defend me? Why did you let him say that shit? Yeah, then you can't He calls. You're going to tilt him from home when he watches this. No, I don't think so. I don't think he cares. I'll, I'll, I'll buzz He doesn't. No, he doesn't. I'll get Twitter hate. He's a good guy. And I always welcome the trolls on Twitter as well. I actually say, I'm like, listen, if you're going to troll me, just be creative with it. By the way, give, be funny. Him, give him credit. That was a great call, Dintali. Great call oh, on the river. Unbelievable. I paid for one of them and gave them <laughs> Thanks for wasting 45 seconds of our lives, but a right. fine call. <laughs> I mean, spades were there. <laughs> unbelievable. Lux, Lux at Turno says it best. He says he has to make sure everyone is paying attention. Look at me, look at me. It's very true. I'm saying how many of cracked open. We're all jealous. I'm just, I'm just jealous. But, His arms are bigger than my legs. But the thing is, Dentali is very famous on the East Coast around the tournament circuits. Everyone knows him. I mean, mostly because of his annex, because he blows up at floor people and dealers and players, and he, a whole room is watching him. Almost every tournament, there's something going on. So everyone knows him. 
And, uh, you know, whatever. He I does, don't mind the him. antics. I don't mind the antics, and I have fun with it, and I think it's great, and I think his, his uh, you know, his chat and the way he banters with people. Yeah. I think that's fantastic, especially for TV. Um, I don't like the fact that, you know, I don't like crossing the line and taking advantage of floor men and dealers. Right, right. Because well, somebody gets the blinds every time, right? there's a saying, you know, don't punch down, punch up. And that's kind of it. Just you know, for sure. Well, he you got don't take you don't take advantage of somebody that when when you are in a place, especially in customer service business, where you have to deal with dealers and floormen when they can't say anything to you. You know. Yeah. He well, he actually got banned from parks yeah, for a year. Uh, he was he was crushing the parks big stacks tournaments for the first year we had him, and then uh, he got out of line with a floor guy and a player, and he got banned for a year, and he lost a place he could go to, and, and still cr and he lost a lot of money making opportunity for him for that year. So he was really upset, but. Uh, he understood. He got out of line, and he, he, I probably won't do it again. My guess is he probably saved money. <laughs> no, he's actually he's actually a very successful tournament player on the East Coast. Yeah. Green six four, two spades. You guys did him a favor. You took a straight flight here. I flew to Chicago. See where Red Sox now? He has got a story for Natalie's uh, story. How's it compared to Portland? Where is it? Oh. Red Sox Nets says my favorite moment with Tali was when I put out a C bat and he stared me down, talked for a minute, turned over bottom pair and told me he knew I was bluffing. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure what happened after that. If he called he or, or he folded or of what? Of course he folded. <laughs> I know you're bluffing, but I just don't want to call. Yeah. Okay. Ryder back says he's actually smart for a Jersey guy. Why are people so ashamed of that? That's one thing I don't get. Uh, 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 there's a lot of wannabe on the crowd in Portland. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they all people sold up 80%. Do. They're just like in the more independent. I, I, like main event, I, I was just like, shouldn't make a difference. You're not going to play differently. Thomas picks up 10s. So what's the point of like hiding it from people? You're going to claim the right amount of taxes. I've never seen you like, what are you, are you like embarrassed? Like once you're embarrassed, like Joe is, because he's so broke. So you know, we're going to have all these commentaries, you know, the the uh, replays on the site. I think it's on the Twitch site. You can watch them tomorrow or the next day. It'd be, it'd be good to have each each day have one with commentary and one without commentary where you can watch either one so one they don't have to hear us they could just watch the guys downstairs and listen to them yeah. But if they want the commentary, they can watch the version with, with us talking. Because there's a lot of good stuff, especially yesterday, the first four hours, with, those, with Siegel and Natalia going off for each other and stuff, and, and Jared. A lot of good banter down there. Fantastic. Yeah, they're actually talking about, I think they're referencing the November 9, and the fact that Canuli and uh, McKeon are playing in this. And Deeb is actually like, I don't think it makes a difference at all. He's like, what's the point of hiding? He's like, you know, it's a totally different game. You play I promise it. you, if Deeb was in the final November 9, he would not be playing on TV right now. I could promise you that. Yeah. He could say whatever he wants. <laughs> Thomas with a pair of tens here. He's going to bet and take it down. Supreme Terrific says, the broadcast on Twitch will actually be with commentary, and you can actually watch the beginning of today's stream right now. Which is nice, also. You can watch it over again. You can watch it at your convenience. You can tweet Matt Glance and let him know how terrible he is later on. <laughs> so Supreme Terrific is someone who works for Twitch? I assume that. I, I think that little sword. The sword means he's a moderator. Okay. Making sure that everybody stays in line. By the way, I preached that the, the, the Twitch comments today significantly more in line. They got a little bit out of line yesterday. Uh, not even toward us, but just in general. Towards the players? No, just in general, just in terms of like just... A lot of things with, because Samantha was on there. The yeah, some things, things that might have yeah. been a little bit more inappropriate. Yeah. He runs pure. Yeah, runs pure. So it's got enough of the... We raised 16. ...but it doesn't feel quite as hipsterish as... Yeah, I think our commentary is embedded into the stream. But maybe on the, on the PokerDite.com site, you can have a version without the commentary. They could just hear the players talk the whole time. Why would anybody want that? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> That's terrible. If somebody, if they started liking that, I'd be without a job. <laughs> they could like both. This could be the live stream, and then the replay you could hit, you could watch with just the players. I think they might like both. Deep opens. Canuli three bets. So 
Anthony called in between, by the way. <laughs> Deep's not folding. There's no way in a million years Deep is folding. No, that's for sure. And, this is all you well, and also deep stuck, so. Yeah, and there's, there's and no chance. And he'll tell you that wouldn't make a difference, but let me tell you, it, all, it makes a difference for everyone. Does anybody play as well when they're losing? Not when they're one winning? person in the world. I have different bright shirts, too. Well, now, Annie Duke though, claimed that. I remember this ESPN broadcast where Annie Duke actually was interviewed and claimed, one of my favorite things about my own ability is that I think I'm just as good when I'm losing as when I'm winning. Yeah, well, 90% of poker players think that about well, themselves, but it's not true. Well, we know how uh, uh, Annie Duke is so truthful, so. <laughs> she, well, would, she, would never, there. she would never lie. <laughs> Gosh. Deep four bets. Canuli calls. Well, he's suited, so he's going to call and see a flop. If he wasn't suited, he would probably fold. <laughs> Pretty big three bet. This bot is like, this bet's $10,000 already. You got to have a subscription? Anthony called too? No? No, no okay. I think he's going to be out of it. Okay. Pot's 9,000. <laughs> Flop 775. <laughs> what is Canuli's? If you're in Deep's spot, what does Canuli's hand look like? Deep does check here sometimes. I'm oh, sure, but what is, what is, more importantly, what does Canuli's hand look like to Deep? When you, when you three bet, when you four bet, you get three bet and then you four suited, bet. A lot of suited maybe, cards. Maybe one day you'll start. Um, sure. You know, like seven, eight suited, yeah. nine, ten suited, yeah. king, king, queen and suited. Like, some some big pairs, aces. He could have aces there. That's true. Now you have ace king though, so it's less likely. Of right, course. Of course. I'm just trying to think of like if I'm in deep spot, what am I putting my opponent on? When he three bet and then calls for it's not. It's not so defined at this point yet. Yeah. I mean, I don't put him on like eights as much, nines as much, because I think he might be flatting with some of those. But Canoli's sick enough to do something here. But I mean, in deep, let him out of leash because he bet very small. Canoli. Canuli is a very, very intriguing player pre-flop. Yeah. Does a lot of three bets, isolates a lot of players. I think he really plays players well. We haven't seen him over the last two days really get out of line post-flop. Mm -hmm. He's fairly straightforward okay. post-flop, and I expect him to fold eventually here. So, uh, so he only bet 30% of the pot here. And by the way, as I say it, <laughs> he's gonna have a he, well, he's going to call. Just call and see what, see what happens in the turn. See if deep checks to him. Yeah, he, like I said, he, just, he really hasn't done too much out of the box. It's really, it's really hard for deep to check call the turn, whatever the turn is, unless he hits the turn like that. Oh, what it's a just turn the best, <laughs> the worst case What card. a turn Worst case card for Cannoli. So now deep could check. Right. Although Canuli's got to realize, you know, they could actually one of the hands that's in Deeb's range is Ace King. Yeah. And if Deeb is putting any serious money in the pot, he's got Ace King or Aces. He's not putting serious money in the pot with Jacks. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, he moved all in. Yeah, it's just sick. What a sick turn card. I mean, even if, it turns out, even if Deep checked, it would have went in anyway at some point. Well, the pot's just so big. Yeah. He had less than the pot. There was uh, 15,000 in the pot. He only had 9,000 left. That's, that, this is the first hand Canuli has lost in, like, three months. He doubled diamonds against clients earlier. Yeah, please. Thank you. Uh, Ace-King's going to scoop that both times. Whatever. That's another 9,500. By the way, this pot now, $42,000. Deeb is in this game for 35,000, so he goes from being down 20 to up 7. Yeah. If my math is correct. Yeah. 50. No. By the way, my math significantly better than whoever did the graph earlier on at Poker Night in America. <laughs> it was great. I don't know if you saw it. There was a graph, a plus minus graph, at, right for the break. So they had the rankings. They had the chip counts, and they had plus minus. So it had something like guy starts with 20,000, stack 12,000, minus 14. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> it didn't add up. No. Somebody's math was off. <laughs> Yeah, we got to change this. Uh, hopefully by uh, like November, we'll get the new software, and we won't have this ranking there that you see on the screen. It's not very informative. Dan, it says zero for Deeb. Obviously, Deeb's got like 45,000 right now. Even if the numbers are right, it's not if ranking is even the right word for it. It would just be chip count. Big swing for Canuli, by the way. Canuli was at one point up nearly sixteen thousand dollars. He's now down. Wow. We'll see how he plays differently now. But he won pretty good yesterday, too, right? So he's still up for the weekend. He won, and he's got a million in the bank. Yeah. So, I mean, are you really going to go on tilt? He's got an interesting rail for the uh, final table. 
Here's uh, the Jeff Gross, Antonio, Antonio, those guys, the big, big they poker him or something? Is that what it is? They have some financial interest. I yes. assume. Yes. So they'll be all be there. It'll be a very interesting rast as part of that. I think group. we can pull the curtain back and, and reveal. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. There are some players that get backing. Yes. It happens. And people, and also people just swap when they get deep in the main event. They swap like two percent with somebody else. And now, if you have two percent of the guy, you're going to go there and expect it's a big number now. I was uh, pleased, like three years ago, I swapped 1% with uh, Jason Somerville. I was like, go, oh, Jace. Yeah, yeah. It's like, this is awesome. I now, backing it, happens, staking happens. In fact, a good friend of mine started a, uh, a staking company called sta uh, Tasty Steaks. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've heard about that. I've seen some advertisement. I know Bart's wearing the Tasty Cakes banner on his shirt. It's, like I said, a good friend of mine is a great web designer. You, so you sold some pieces this summer, I think yeah. I saw there. Well, main event, yeah. What about that um, But it's, uh, no, it's a great site. Like I said, it's, uh, does they charge you nothing. It's completely free. So and what's it, their it, revenue model? Yeah. Uh, right now, I mean, honestly, my buddy made it because Bart was actually selling a big package this summer. He was selling like 140000 and he, he was going to hire somebody to build, just to like take, keep track of it all. So my buddy was like, this is stupid. I'll just build something. And he does this stuff for fun. He built it. It's a great site. Like I said, yeah. it's totally free. It's called tastysteaks.com if you, uh, you're looking for backing in tournaments or you want to invest in players. By the way, Brian Rast... Yeah. The 500K at Aria, he sold on Tasty Steaks. Oh, great. You could have bought a piece of them on Tasty Steaks. And he came in second or first? First. Oh, he won seven and a half million. Sick. Wow. And you could have won a piece. You could have bought a piece of That's them awesome. So I might have to try that site. It's pretty cool. I guess I check it out next summer. You don't play another tournament till then? No, I play, but I don't play any one that I would sell. But right, maybe next you. summer I play the, the 50K and I might you know, sell for the 50K. I think I might play. Or something like that. I only play about five or six tournaments a year, but I think I am going to play WPT Legends. Okay. Um, and I'll probably sell a little bit. Never on played Tasty's that one. I am. <laughs> I will. Uh, I'll probably sell a little bit on Tasty Steaks. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. You wouldn't be the first person to play. Oh, never. It's not. It's not a huge buy-in. There, there are two days to re-entry. There is a 25k in Florida next week. Maybe. A, maybe I could sell in there for. Uh, there you go. For that one. <laughs> I like this guy's uh, Twitch name. I love yeah. Mac Lance. Hi, Mac Lance. <laughs> hey, he wanted, he, uh, he, 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 wanted wanted the, he wanted me to read it. He exactly. got it. You want a shout out? That's the best way to do it. <laughs> I'm new Flattery to will get things. you That's everywhere. Awesome. You plan so you can just change your name on Twitch as much as you want? Oh, you meant I, I think so. I think you can probably create different names and stuff like that. I'm not sure if there's a way to actually ban people or not, because maybe you can just go out and make a new login. Or you, you might need a new email or something, yeah, yeah. and then set it all up. It's a pain in the neck. So Natalia actually has a decision this time. It's not the easiest call, and it might not even be a call, but... No, it's three clubs it, out there. I it, mean, turns, it turns out he is, he is pretty far ahead, but... I think, again, though, just like Bart Hansen did it earlier, I think Torelli is noticing the same exact thing. Dentali is up $7,500, doesn't want to lose, wants to book the win. There's only 25 minutes left in today's session, and he wants to, he wants to leave a winner. And there, Torelli shows the bluff. I could tell by the way you folded... Why she thought you were going to be I like I was on the fence, and, and like, he confirmed like, it when he made the facial expression. Dentali's in lockdown. I think that's so valuable if you're playing poker to, to understand when your opponents are on lockdown. Yeah. Because you can just abuse them. Very, it's so, it, it's just knowing where the people's mindsets, your, your opponent's mindsets are, is so beneficial in poker, especially in cash games like this. Apparently from Supreme Terrific says you can be permanently banned from Twitch through your IP address. It takes repeated offenses though. So basically you got to be a complete douchebag. Is that going to work for me in this event? was my opener at every table? They don't mess around at Twitch. Well, I mean, I think, you know, part of the value of it, obviously it's a great streaming site. You were saying for video gamers and stuff yeah. and for poker now. I mean, between Somerville, Daniel Legrand who does it, um, Jamie Staples, there's, it's just a great place to be. And that's obviously one of the reasons Poker Night in America there is there. And the chat is fantastic, too. Um, there it is. I just gave it to you. His number for coaching. It doesn't, it just takes, a, a, you know, a couple of jerks to kind of ruin the chat room, though. Yeah. So... Queen 10 3, Anthony with a uh, gut shot to Broadway, plus the ace of hearts. Hansen's got the flush draw. And now the heart comes off on the turn.
could get a lot of money in there because Anthony's not going to fold anything. <laughs> no, for sure. He's he, he wants to, he wants to get win a big pot before the end of the night. We're getting oh, very sure. close, and he hasn't won much many pots. He's had a rough day. He's run really bad. Hanson check calls. Turns a seven. Yeah, sure. Hanson now has showdown value. Anthony now needs an ace, a jack, a king. Hanson is only calling the turn. He's never folding, never raising here. Just picked up a pair yeah. and already has a flush draw. Well, this is kind of similar to the play we saw earlier on with Jared Blesnick. If he hadn't picked up a pair, uh, Torelli mentioned this. If you don't pick up the pair, it's actually more likely and makes more sense to check raise the turn. Yeah, because you sure. have no showdown. Exactly. But now, but now you got a pair. Right. Now Bart's doing the Hollywood, but he's always calling here. He's never doing anything but calling. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's going to be calling almost any river that is seven or below. And there are some rivers like Jack or King where he's not going to call on the river where he loses anyway. But that's a river where he's. It's gonna, a great river. That's where. That's where Bart's check calling all day. He's never. That's betting. the best river in the deck. This, and Rich finally gave up Anthony, and he realizes he's got called down too many times today to keep doing it. Yeah, and and, and that's a really good check back, I think, yeah, because for sure. Bart the boards. has a right. Bart has right. a ton more tens in his range mm -hmm. than Anthony, because if Anthony had a ten, he likely checks back the turn. <laughs> So Bart's the one who actually has a lot more tens in his range, and I think if Anthony had a hand like Queen Jack or King Queen, he actually checks those back a ton yeah. too. So it's just to start looking at going well. If you're not betting all your queens, you don't have that many tens. What are you betting? You know, it's almost like you have to have a full That's a good house. Point. So I don't. It's better than getting like 220. Yeah, the King of Hearts actually would have been the best card in the deck for Bart. Sorry. <laughs> Is this reality or is this real Tia? Says, uh, you know, King of Hearts, please. Yeah, King of Hearts would have been uh, pretty, pretty good card. So I'm getting some, some text that people want me to put some stuff out there. So Dr. Mike, the who runs the uh, big 400-800 mix game at, at, at Bergados on Fridays, and he wants people to come down. He wants more players. He said it, he said that these pots aren't that big. If you want to see real pots, come to his game who is this? on Fridays. Dr. Mike, he's a legend in, in high-stakes poker. Uh, and then uh, um, Joe McKeon from the table here, he just texted me. He wants to know if, if we can go eat dinner before we leave tonight. My... My, uh, Are you driving out tonight? <laughs> yeah, we're driving back home to Philly tonight. I get, I'm the chauffeur for the uh, final table chip leader. You're his bitch. Prima Donna. I'm like his dad right now. So right, you're his dad. Got to guide him for every, Daddy every little move. Yeah. So, uh, so you guys going to get dinner before you leave? He's going to get dinner. I think we, we're going to do streaming for another 30 minutes after. So I told him to hurry up and get dinner after they're done. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he's got a pack. He asked me... Uh, you know, he asked me some <laughs> very <laughs> naive questions uh, this weekend. Like, for instance, he wants to know if his friend can check out of his room tomorrow. Does he need to keep Joe's ID for tomorrow if we leave tonight? Something. Is, has he never been to a hotel? <laughs> How old is he? <laughs> He's just a kid. He's not that young. No. <laughs> That's what these kids, these poker kids, they don't know anything. They just know poker. Yeah, but I mean, you, what, you've never been to a hotel room? It's, it's, I get que asked questions like this all the time from these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Hanson turns trip tens. Uh, nobody which my well, I mean Anthony's got two pair of jacks and tens. Porter's got a pair of sevens, so tens and sevens. Uh, Hanson's almost definitely gonna bet this for value. It's just a question of uh, will he get paid off? The club does come as well. Mailbox money. Mailbox money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess when you're young and you like, you know, you don't travel that much, or if you go to a hotel room, which with your parents, you're not dealing with checking in and checking out, right? Right. For sure. Here's rep in a spot where. It's kind Can you let them know that you don't actually have to check out at all? You could just leave, and they'll still send you the bill. They'll still make you pay. <laughs> <laughs> Rep made the call. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, a bluff catcher only. Yeah, obviously. Nice little pot there. So Hansen. Dale, Dale Boone, 55, wants to know if I'm driving back to Philly tonight to pick up chicks with Joe. Um, no, Dale. Actually, I'm driving back to Philly to drop Joe off at his parents' house so he can go 
go to sleep in his parents' basement, and um, then I get to go to my house about 15 minutes away to see my my wife and my kids. Yeah, that's pretty much our exciting night when we get home. Right, right person, right upon. <laughs> can you totally, hey, do me a favor? Can you totally fuck with Joe? When, no, seriously, when you, when you, when you leave, Exactly Can you just be ego. like, just say to him, be like, hey, did you check out? <laughs> and if he says no, be like, whoa, you didn't thing. check out. Yeah, no, I just you didn't pay? The place is going to be already made, The problem is when he asked me the question with his friend, uh, they're both looking at me like, like, can we do this? Can we check out without Joe's ID tomorrow if we leave tonight? And I looked at him and I was like, come on, guys, seriously. <laughs> I already made enough fun of him. I got really worried we'd lost our uh, side bet with Helmuth, but then oh, I yeah, did I've been some more research. About that. And we got to be a massive. So, poor, so no, CMS 707 so. says Porter the dunk call so there. So um, yeah, I mean, it's not a dunk. You, so can we like, can see the hands. Remember, CMS, you can, can see the hands. I can see the hands. Dave Tuckman can see the hands. Rep can't see his opponent's hands. So he's a bluff catcher. Rep knows that. He's not being any value hand, but he's beating all bluffs. So, you know, he just called thinking that Bart could be bluffing there. It's but pretty much that simple. Not a, it's not a dunk call. I mean, sometimes it's a matter of odds, too. I mean, it, you know, the pot's 1,000, your opponent bets 500, so another pot's 1,500, 500 to call. You're getting 3 to 1. Is your is your opponent bluffing 1 in 4 times? Right. If you're if you're a good poker player, if you're a top poker player, you've made many worse calls than that call. Oh, yeah. By the way, uh, November 9 or Max Steinberg, yeah. and I've been talking about him all weekend. Yeah, like, he, like, he made a famous call in the national championship. Like, he called it Jack High. And right. Like, and you, you know, they just they just aired the WPT um, yeah. LA Cla like Poker Classic from like, this year. Yeah. And so Claude like, also called with Jack High. Happens. I mean, we all. I mean, yeah. and he won. And he, yeah, he was, I was right say, at the I mean, final table. As long as we fade that, then we're okay. Yeah. The more advanced you play, and the more you play, you'll notice that your 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 bluffs, your value bets become, you know, your value bets get thinner. Um, you bluff a little bit in, in different situations. And sometimes you make crazy calls with ace high, king high. Where you know your opponent's got like, you know, the absolute nuts or nothing. Red Sox Nets saying Joe called Negranio with Jack High. I guess he's, he's meeting that Joe called with Jack. Oh, he's saying. The, the hand he busted Negrano. Right. I don't know if you really call him with Jack. He called with a gut shot and flush draw. Yeah. I don't know if that's considered <laughs> Jack guy. Hey, Jack guy. I think we're, I, I, we're I talking think about river calls, right. Red Sox, but he knows that. He's just messing around. Uh, Anthony with a set of sevens here. Torelli with top pair. And I believe Dentali is open-ended. I think the flop is 9.75. Yeah. So Dentali is a pretty big flop here, open-ended with backdoor hearts. Torelli with top pair. Anthony with a set of sevens. And you mentioned Anthony desperate to win well, one big pot. If he loses this one, it's a heartbreak because, I mean, he he does he is at risk this hand because I am so cheering for Dentali's never folding. I want the run out to be jack five. Any official thing. Like, there's not too many official things that go down. Jack five, yeah, that would be the most pain for everyone. It'd be awesome. Jack, a lot of money gets in there, then the five. Bink. Don't just call Anthony, please raise. No, he's going to. Did he raise? Did he please raise, please raise. He didn't raise. Oh, man. Come on, man. Build, <laughs> gotta build, that pot build the pot. Come on, Jack. Jack. That's a cool bet to Don't get checked around. Oh, that's terrible. Man. Dentelli's going to check this back. I don't think so. He's got a top pair and a gut shot. Yeah, I know. He, I mean, he shouldn't, yeah, but he's going to. I don't think he like will. No, he has no pair. What are you talking about? He has no pair and an open-ended straight draw. Torelli has. No, I meant Dentali. Oh, Dentali. Oh, yeah, but Torelli's going to bet. Okay. He's top pair and a straight draw and the two opponents he's against. Right. Dentali, he's not going to want Dentali. He's not going to try to get Dentali. Wow. It checks through. I wouldn't expect Dentali to bet my hand for me, so I would have bet there in, in Torelli's spot. And really bad card for Torelli. Oh, Torelli's wow. Favorite. Really bad card here. Come on, Anthony. <laughs> Just move all in. <laughs> See, that's the problem. He made such a big hand, and the pot's so small. Yeah. He didn't check raise a flop, and it really... Killed the action. Let's see if Torelli. And let's see if Torelli can read his soul. The most possible bets that can go in on the river is two bets now, and the pot's small, so it's not going to be that big. He bets twenty-two hundred. Yeah. Well. So. Uh, wow. No, Torelli's hand must be wrong. He must not have the nine of spades. Really? He just went. He just went. Just straight up. Maybe he had a. Maybe he had a. He had a read. But 
We gotta ask. Anth him. But Rich has made so many bluffs today in like spots like that where I'm with you. You just can't oh. fold there, and he didn't even think about it. You think the we, have, we had to have Torelli's hand wrong? Must have. Okay. He just didn't even consider it. Oh, I don't care about that. You know what? I care about the They're off right now because we're we're on 30 minute delay. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna ask him. Nine five seven rainbow. Yeah. And you still call the bet, right? Like, even if Torelli was going to make a great fold, you have Alex's number. Oh, so you yeah. The maze even if he was going to make a great fold, he would think about it. He's not the type of player just to fold a hand like that for no reason. Can you text him? Yeah. Text him and ask him what he had that hand You're on the nine seven five board. You have lower standards. Hence the guy that gets there every time. I don't get there every time. Ooh. Brian Terpstra tweeted me from at Terpin himself talking about credit card roulette. Pro tip, Tuck. Get a slightly bent credit card. I have an old one that was warped from being in my wallet. Never lost a round with it. Do they naturally take the warped one? Makes sense. Look at that. The trip lines? You just fold the trip lines? Yeah. For which? He's gangster, though. There's no you gotta pay him off. I make a, I make a lot of big I know, but with Rich, you gotta pay him off. You wouldn't have a fold in a lot you folded it an ace to him? Yeah. That's a good fold. Ace, ace jack. Against you. Ace hearts. Ace of hearts. Ace of hearts. took a chance. Wow, I don't know. would have got you. Yeah. I think so. I think I was thinking about that at some point during the hand. Like, it was oh, ace, ace, ace nine six rainbow. Two aces. It was ace, ace, ace six ace. rainbow. Yeah, but I'm saying that nine eight, the, the flush draw never came into play, right? There was never a flush draw. Yeah. Oh, you're just saying because you had the other ace. Your name Money? awards. Nine eight five hundred ninety five. I mean, he might have folded the nine six. I don't think he would have, but you would have thought about it. He would have thought. He's not the type of player just to make just to make a snap decision. There's no decision. way. Yeah, there's no way. I, I'm with you on that. <laughs> like he probably certainly not with top pair, not he, with trips. He probably had like ten high or jack. Like he might have had the same exact hand as like a similar hand as Dentali, where he had like straight draw, where he just had no jack equity. ten type hand, yeah. something like that. Probably bought your hand to call it. Right. I can buy that. Really? Porter raising here. Hanson's got aces. He's not going to fold. Looks like ooh. Is Hanson four betting, three betting this? Four betting, really sorry. <laughs> wow. I didn't think he just called you Sean. He is. I'm, I'm wrong a lot. Hanson making an adjustment here. Seeing that Porter is uh, three betting a little bit light. I don't like the score bet. They're pretty deep. I don't think he wants to get that much in. It looks like they're what, at least 12,000 deep. Is he, ra is he four betting the full with two tens? I don't like that I don't, at all. I don't think so, but it's good. Yeah, no, no, it's I think he's a little bit, earlier on he played queens a little he bit was passively. In he was in position, so he could play the hand in position against rep, and now he just got, he's going to get all worse hands to fold there, yeah. and he's going to get in a really tricky spot if rep has a bigger hand. I could buy it. If I say that one more time, I'm going to shoot myself. That's tilted, right? Isn't that tilted, though? The have and is fold? A lot. Sometimes I'm wrong. Play bad, run good, says with credit card roulette. Give the waitress an expired card. She'll just run a different card. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> they pick the card at the table, generally. He just really let rep off the hook there. Like He had he had rep stone nutted, tens versus nines, and really just made it made rep play, play the hand perfectly. <laughs> just getting off really cheap. Right. At a position, would you like the uh, four bet better? Um, at a position, I like it better, but I think they're too, still too deep with a hand like nines or tens. I'd rather just see a flop and try to... You know, play. It, depend, it just depends on stack sizes, but I think they're weight. It looks like Jabbar has a ton of chips, but I think Rep has like 12,000 in front of them also. Although Rep might be shorter, it looks like now Rep might be shorter than I thought. I just get it in pre-flop. I don't even get to Yeah, you just get it in pre-flop. I'm a tournament player at heart. Anyway, to see how, how many chips Rep has? Porter? I'm a great river player. I'm a very good flop and turn player, too. It's so much easier to play when you just got it. Yeah, I know. It's so fun when you just don't, have don't it. Don't you teach that? a lot today. He gives himself a lot of Just a few minutes left in tonight's show. Back at it tomorrow at 1230 <laughs> Eastern time with the final table of the tournament. And when I say... Uh, 12.30, I'm, I'm being very approximate. Because it could be 1.30. It could be 2.30. He wouldn't give himself a chance. That last hand? The plan is for me to be here. But we'll see. If it's too late, I'm not going to stay. <laughs> I'm driving back. To, I'm driving back to the lake. I need a beer. Yeah. Stop wasting time. We only get one more hand. What's the difference? I just saved seven. How far is the lake from here? Two hours. Oh,
Yeah, we're going about four and a half hours tonight. I had Queen 10. I've, I've only got, a, I've only got like a week left. I, I got like four days, five days left of my vacation. I want to come enjoy it. I had a spade. Beautiful lake. Yeah. yeah. Wake up in the morning. I go for a hike. I think I had the Queen of Spades. Jump in the water. Jump in the lake. Go swimming. I've got jet skiing, water skiing, tubing. It's just... It is all so awesome. This is ridiculous. I mean, it seems that ridiculous to lie. You know, but the fact you pull a queen ten is, can't be good. Like, yeah, I know it's not the best hand, but like, you're going to win. I just think I'm not seeing the flop enough. Really think he's Did uh, Alec get back to you? Like, no, he's not good with text. He, he usually takes an hour to respond to text, from I what I've noticed. The live stream for six he doesn't hours check them all the time. He's married. How does that work? I don't know. If I wait an hour to respond to my wife's text, it doesn't go well. I mean, I was all earlier. Deep raising to 150. By the way, not nearly as much straddling in this. The straddle hasn't been yeah. as active. It's been no, on and off. True. No, I didn't. What are you? I was mostly. Canceling calls. So grinding daily says so Sean Deeb is probably the best player at the table, but Alec might be better, unsure. Uh, Sean no, Deeb is definitely the best poker player at the table. Alec might, is probably a better no limit hold and cash player. So you might be right in both by both aspects. Alec, people told me that you were very positive yesterday. I'm a positive person. I'm a positive person, but I did yeah, say a lot of And uh, Joe's, Joe's uh, McKean's probably the best no-limit tournament player of the, of the crew there. So, And also to Tommy Canoli's pretty pretty big-time uh, no-limit cash player, too. I don't think he plays too many tournaments, but he heads up cash and, and shorthanded ca cash. He does really well. Jack high flop. Deep bets the king five. <laughs> Hansen's not going to get involved. He's going to get rid of this. Like, yeah, well, he's got a gut shot, but no backdoor clubs. Was I out of line? Oh, yeah. At one point and he calls. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can only with a pair of sixes. That was less ambitious than against Glance, though. He's going to call as well. Yeah, he did. I mean... He did. Just going to win the bottle out of... Yeah, I guess you're right. You had a good read. You definitely had a good read. That's actually sick. You had to... I'm usually good at reading people just in terms of like actual body language. It feels like Hansen desperately wants to make a move on Deeb. Like he just wants to get him. You know? Uh, unfortunately for Hansen, Canuli's in the pot too, and that kind of makes it a little bit more difficult. Deeb's going to fire again. He's uh, it's a great card for him. He's picked up a lot of equity. He's got a gut shot. He's got a gut shot to go along with uh, the flush draw. You can also catch a king. There were some good hands yesterday, but I mean, I'm sure that I would have critiqued my play. I imagine Hansen will let this go now. Today, as much as I critiqued other people. And he does. I made a few mistakes today that I would have critiqued if I was watching myself. So. There were definitely uh, two or three things I did yesterday then, like, in retrospect. Like calling a queen player a zillion dollars? Yeah, but that doesn't mean I played flawless. Positive and flawless. Canoli calls once again. Pot now 3,200. Positive. Remember calling the Queens for a zillion dollars? Would you have done that again, right? What? Would you have called the Queens for a zillion dollars again? I don't see why not. One pair. I mean, let's pretend the Queen doesn't come. One pair's good. But Six. if you know the Queen of Diamonds is coming to the river, shouldn't you call there? Sure, it's a good turn card. <laughs> oh, that's why. Oh, yeah, you hit two. Yeah. And you ran it once, right? Yeah, he only runs it once so ever, and I won that pot. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just was like. Are you surprised Deep didn't fire one more bullet? Yeah. When the Ace of Spades comes off? I, I think Deep's just tired. He's been playing for two days straight. He knows the other night. And it didn't, it didn't look, you know, it didn't look like a card that's going to help him. So it's not a very believable card for he can bet. So there's the chip counts, and wow. So Richard's now down 40,000, and Alex up the most at 21. And Joe, like every day of, of his life in the past few months, he's up 17,000 or more. And uh, Dentali's now up, so he's no, he won't play a hand in the last few minutes of the show. Bart's up, Dominic won, he left early. I won a big $50, Tommy's even. Hey dude, and, that's uh, gotta feel like a huge win for you. I mean, you were down 10K. I was down 10K. Yesterday I was also down like 6K and I wound up winning like 4,000, so not bad. A tough day for Richard Anthony, huh? Richard, he just got destroyed. He just ran really bad, had really, 
picked really bad spots to bluff and just never really made a hand. Never made the best hand. He made he made either no hand or the second best hand a bunch of times. Canuli, by the way, uh, over a two-day span won 20K. Bard over a two-day span won 9,000. Okay. Travell Thomas had a tough day as well. Joe won over 20 for the two days because he won 17. He won like at least five yesterday, I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's been a lot of fun, man. Trav Travell had a r rough day. He never had a hand. He never he never made a hand no, all day. I, he just, uh, he's in a tough spot. I, I actually mentioned early on, this was, I thought this was one of the tougher Poker Night in America cash game lineups that I've seen. And I've watched four or five of them already. Yeah. And I thought, Travell was going to have a tough time against this lineup, mm -hmm. specifically because of his seat. He had Joe McKeon to his left, he had Sean Deeb to his left, and he had Bart Hansen to his left. So he's got three experienced right, no right. players on his left. Tough table. There aren't that many weak spots. And I just thought that compared to other tables that I had seen Thomas play at, yeah. this was going to be a lot of trouble. This was going to be a challenge for him. I could definitely see that. I mean, it's not an easy table for anyone. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, so... By the way, how about Dominic Cristiano, by the way? Turns uh, $300 into $10,500. Oh, he won a seat for 300 Yeah. That's awesome. On Poker Night. So that is going to do it for us. I want to thank Matt Glantz. I want to thank everybody here at Poker Night in America. And I want to thank Joe Stapleton for helping us out with the cash game. We are back tomorrow for the Empire State Championships final table, which will happen uh, 12 hours after the final table has uh, been set. Right now, it is tentatively set for 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time, but uh, make sure you follow at Poker Night in America, and they'll let you know exactly what time that will start. And uh, that's going to do it for us, Matt. Thanks so much. Great show, Tuck. Appreciate it, buddy. Um, once again, our next stop, Florida, and then we are in Minnesota. But uh, again, tomorrow, if your tournaments are your thing,